Bro Gang, we were joined by the guy who lewd, Lauren Schlossman. Damn, I was thinking of the same pun. Ah! <laughs> I am known by many names. The Lisan Al Ghalib, the Mudadid, the Biznatch Hazarach. I'll show you what a rack is. And myself, the Dominicani Poppy, James Harris. Welcome to the Weekly <laughs> Running the Boys, which says full episode only available on patreon.com slash throne fits. Before we get into Larry's muy caliente <laughs> Oscar takes, oh. getting rescued by Bar Rescue and the best boys trip destination in the Western Hemisphere. Wow. That's Shit you not. One of how many hemispheres are there? Two. Two. Hemi. So that's Hemi. Yeah. That's what that means? I don't, yeah. So when, when they use it in terms of trucks, what does that mean? When you got like a Dodge Hemi? Yeah. You got one of two engines. <laughs> oh, r- word. Yeah. Damn. You it's, learn something new every day. I'm okay. such a car guy. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> no, that sounds so right. Yo, fact check me. Yo, uh, fact check the Hemi. Let's get into a fit check. Yeah. Why don't you start, dog? Okay. Upstairs, I was wearing PG Playground sneakers that I copped in Japan, which are starting to become more available in the US. So if you're... You can get your hands on them now. Front General Store has actually a brown colorway that I might fucking scoop. Hmm. PG Playground. Sounds like Murs B last week. Pita and Gita's Playground. Mm, nice. Um, not really. really socks. No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> Anonymousism socks. Vintage Wrangler jeans from Fantasy Explosion. Throwing Fits X, our legacy workshop collab, arguably the best collaboration of 2023. Yeah. And uh, the most famous white tee since the most famous white tee. There it is. Um, second wear Cardi. I was wearing Dita sunglasses. Bottega on the pinky. Made a name on the f- <laughs> fingy. <laughs> yeah. On the f- fingy is the term. Yeah. For like fingering. No, for finger. Oh, what do you, you think? I'm saying you call this your fingy. You, you think I'm saying wedding ring on the fingering. Well, this is like your it's finger. my left hand. But it's this, not my fingering hand. I thought you fingered with your. I thought you <laughs> fingered with your ring finger for some reason. No, <laughs> I finger with my fingering finger. But to set expectations low, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> Haynes boxers, DP. Thank God. Uh, sipping on Green Point's finest. Do they have DP in the DR? No, they have Coca Sin Azure or something. Is that like a natural sugar soda? That no, it's a. Uh, it's like Coke Zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I wore Hoka and sneakers. I don't know the model, but thank you to our <laughs> friends at End for flowing us the pack I have on Manresa socks. I'm wearing Stussy leather pants. The belt is Maximum Henry. The T is our Legacy Workshop Emporio Armani. The jacket is that as well. The hat is Moonburger. Oh. Shout out to homie Jeremy. Thank you uh, for the nice DJ little pack privilege when he was in the building last week. You've never had Moonburger, right? No. I'm telling you, bro. Well, you don't tr- you don't go anywhere. Well, the, well, the next guy- time you're upstate, go to Moonburger. I just went to Raisin Cane's. I'm going to review it on pot. No, I mean, you don't go anywhere oh. outside of like uh, your neighborhood, which when you're talking to POCs is bed when you're No, when you're talking to POCs is Clinton Hill, when you're talking to white people's bed no, it's the exact reverse. Oh, really? Oh, because you want to be I'm down. Code switching, I'm code switching the zip code, <laughs> depending on who I'm talking to. And yeah, if, zip it's, a, code if it's a POC, you already know it's bed style till I die. <laughs> if it's some fucking Pratt girly, it's Clint Hill. You talking to Pratt girlies? No. Okay. Though there might have, well, I'll talk about my, okay, uh, my okay. finesse at the event. No, not me. Right, right, The good right, deed right. I have done for another fellow um, penis haver. Yeah. <laughs> the Moonburger hat, I was wanting to wear mine today, but cannot. we cannot repeat John's. Oh, real Great quick. Great blank, because it's the real tree. It's the real, real tree. It's real, real tree. Yeah. Uh, my belt, Tre- because it's visible in the photo. Mm-hmm. I never mentioned my belt, Trebian. Nice. Um, I am wearing Brady Brand uh, on the cock and balls because I have a ton of laundry to do, but shout out to Goat. Um, wedding ring on the thingy, aka finger, not okay. fingering, to be clear. Wifey on the, oh, Rolly on the wrist, wedding ring on the thingy, wifey on the pinky, chrome on the other hand, and I'm sipping on a hydro flask full of green points. Finest. And you have a six mil six milli pilly in the upper deck. Yeah, it's funny how um we're gonna talk Zins a bit. One, well, I don't know if I should say this now or save it. It's really helping me cut down on the darts. Like truly. How what are you up to uh day now? Like how many Zins Dar- or darts? Dart-wise. So when you go downstairs, when you arrive here, we pre pro for like 45 minutes and you go downstairs to have a dart. Are you popping a zin or are you smoking no, a sick? No, no, it's between zins. Okay. It's between pillow. It's it's the stick between the pillows. It's a palate cleanser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Um People are very divisive on their flavor of choice. You're what? Spearmint? Peppermint. Peppermint. Yeah. Which like, I don't know 
what the what that like what your Zen flavor says about you. I just I'm a peppermint poppy. So what's how many cigs we doing? Oh, uh, honestly, dude, I'm really, really cutting down. It's uh, good. It's not. Otherwise, it, you'll be dead in 10 years. It's Well, I mean, who knows based Five on years. how many I've smoked already. But no, we're down to single digits. The issue now is I'm just fully addicted to six milli gum pilly Zins. Yeah. So that's like another thing. But um they're doing a, a lot better in terms of like not destroying my marriage. So that, Oh, works. that's good. Yeah. I was with a homie um, in the DR on this boy's trip that is fully addicted to Zins. And uh, we, he only brought down one tin. So we were out by like day two, oh, like day two or sure. four. And he was like, he was like, Oh God, like, yeah, I hate this. They're really great for flying. I know you're not like technically supposed to. Um, and I've only ever heard of, one mutual of ours, and I'm not going to say his name, getting busted, and he fully got busted because, like, yo, you're a bitch ass. Like, how are you going to? How do you biz- get busted? You're the bitch ass hazard. You don't pop one in front of a fucking flight attendant. Oh, that's just stupid. I know exactly. Um. Anyway, use your imagination on who that is, and uh, yeah, Honestly, you gotta there there. You gotta travel with. I've been traveling when we've been traveling, like, and obviously you can get them in Vegas or wherever you go when you're in the states for the most part. But I definitely am taking like two tins. Mm. Just to be safe. Are you now back on the AOC train like it's 2018 with uh, her uh, packing a tin at the State of the Union? So it's funny. I saw that meme and I'm like, that's definitely just a tin of concealer oh. as, a, as a woman. Oh, like, women don't zin? No. <laughs> Honestly, I've never met a female zinner. I'm sure you have. You just wouldn't know. It's so concealed. I know. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's um, the zin talk for now. For until, now, until, more to come. Until we get into more Zin talk. Until we later. get to the Zaddies, which yeah. is a brand new Zin format that um, I can't wait to talk about. So dangerous. Uh, what are we fucking What's first? doing here? What's first? Oh my God, we're riding a high off of the first Throwing Fits live activation of 2024, <laughs> in which we helped the German homies, the homie zomies at um, Mersby Schwannen to open up their first US store. Mm-hmm. And we did a live pod with Pita and Gita. And thank you to the 4,000 people who came through in the torrential downpour and crammed into the beautiful space. Yeah. Whether you were there for the white tea, for the grape and cheese toothpick <laughs> spears, yeah. or to hear us pod, probably more the first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for pulling up. That was fucking awesome. And like mind blowing sensory overload. Too and much. I was so keyed up that I couldn't uh, sleep, get, get to sleep when I got home. Same. Yeah, I was, was just jacked like, to the tits. To the tits. To the tits. Um, People waiting outside around the block in the rain. That always is a visual that like I'll never get used to. And I think we're past imposter syndrome when it comes to these like store events because like nah, this, not me. No, really? I was again like, what if literally nobody shows but up? But it's the bread. Well, I think the weather had me a little shooketh, but like that's the bread and butter. I think of what we do. Yeah. I was also a little concerned because I think, are we behind the paywall? We just potted. No. We're not behind the paywall. We just potted. No chance. We went straight from a pod to uh, recording the afters of the pod. Yep. To uploading all this shit to DJ white privilege, pulling up, um, dropping off these hats. Or I guess he dropped off before. And had to go to the live event. And so it was like pretty hectic. That was a crazy um, day. I mean, that, doing three pods. And I think that's why I've seen some comments about the new afters where it's like, oh, I like this like James and Lawrence vibe. And it's like, yeah, because we're fucking torched from potting normally for like upwards of two hours right before that. Well, so no, that, we're keyed up. No, no. I, I, even if it's an amazing pod like we did with Mia, which is like for me, I'm like, that's, Wait, are we in front of the paywall? We, we've been saying that. Also, it comes out fucking tomorrow. Who gives a shit? Okay, so Mia Khalifa on the podcast tomorrow. Yeah. Not only like, I mean, just, and we talk about it in the afters, but for me, it could go as well as that, which is like a fucking 13 out of 10. But like, I'm then just really exhausted. Mm. So that's why my energy is maybe more like normal than like the, yo, what up? It's fucking Larry. Sleepy Wowie. Yeah. Baby Wowie. Baby Lawrence. Baby Wawince. Wawince. He needs his breath milk. You're jacked up after a good pod. I'm jacked up Jimmy to the tits. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of tit talk on uh, the on the Mia Khalifa pod. She's a motherfucking open book. And yeah, I mean, I can't wait for people to hear it. I think it's uh, what? What are you laughing about? <laughs> on the um, so my friends were asking me. Uh, so, I was OK. Context. I was just on a three night trip down to the DR. We're going to talk about it with a bunch of friends, 10 homies total. Um, and they were like, yo, how was the Mia Khalifa pod? And I mentioned the one question I asked that where she was like trying to give a real answer. You're just cracking up, dying, laughing. Oh, yeah. No spoilers. <sighs> I mean, but you knew what you were doing when you asked that. 
And then it's also for me, it's like, how is this going to go? You never know. They were like, <sighs> well, what was, it, what was there? So like spending four days with your friends that, you know, it, as adults, like you just kind of see them like sparingly or you like see them at a bar or whatever to spend like four uninterrupted days with people. Like you talk a lot more about, and we are going to talk about this. You talk a lot more deeper than you normally go. Real and so people were like legitimately like asking questions, everyone about like their jobs, their families, their personal lives, et cetera. Um, and I forget how it came up exactly, but I was like, Sydney, <laughs> I don't know, like Sydney Sweeney's are, are canon stolen valor. And they're just like, what the fuck was that sentence, bro? Yeah. Like, what is that? How is that your, none of these real? words are in the Bible? No, not at all. But, uh, well, yeah, let's not dive into that take okay. because we got to say, right. except, first of all, it's not even our take. Um, right. I personally think Sydney Sweeney is extremely fucking intelligent. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, I think she's in. Does she? Sydney Zinny, I don't know, whatever. Sydney Zweeney. Exactly. There you go. Um, no, yeah, I think uh the MERS shit was like it's it's tough to do that third pod, but I think it went well. I mean, yeah. the joke, the joke for me there is that like for anyone who listened, it's on Patreon right now. Um, it's like a fully lost in translation by design yeah. podcast, right? <laughs> Yo, but the fucking fucking dem franchise boys, the bears. Uh, yeah. what? Two, what, the, what is this value? What is the damn franchise boys you speak of? Two neurodivergent podcasts, or more, I guess one neurodivergent podcaster. And well, how would you how would you define your brain? Uh I don't know. A mind that can bridge both space and time. Riddled with holes. Yeah. <laughs> like some Swiss cheese in the dome. Right, so a neurodivergent brain and a Swiss cheese brain versus 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 two just extremely yeah. enthusiastic and pragmatic and wholly sincere Germans. I want to give a special shout out not only to the four thousand people who pulled up, but also to the two guys who clearly just saw a crowd and walked down the street, maybe looking for cover from the rain, or maybe looking for some free hors d'oeuvres and free booze, which they Certainly help themselves to. Yeah. There's a this like <laughs> old black unk who pulled up wearing like full fake Gucci head to toe. Go. Even in the rain, he was wearing like fake Gucci, like uh the um like the pattern, the, yeah. like the G pattern, uh loafers. I think I think there was even a fake Gucci do-rag, if I'm not mistaken. That's so sick. I didn't see the do-rag, but I saw the rest and, of the fit. And then there was this other guy who was there like from minute four. And that's where I was like, oh shit, is this gonna be a brick where it's just some fucking vagrant slob off the street trying on clothes. Bad clothes. Like, and I'm like, I don't think this guy's gonna buy the t-shirt is, or like they have his sizing. I think he's here just to eat and drink and he's, but he feels like he has to put on the airs as if he's sure. here to actually make a purchase. I don't think he made a purchase. I think he ate all the pizza. Yeah, he's, uh, that's like a classic New York lost soul where you're like, what is this guy's backstory? That'll be us in three years. I hope bro. not. Um, but it was hilarious to see Who him. Who are these boomers at the Gen Z Bushwick rave that are just here for the fucking hors d'oeuvres and <laughs> yeah. When I watched him try on multiple Zins. like hoodies, I'm like, yeah. bro, what are you doing? Dude? There's always one of those guys ever since we first started. Is there? Going, bro, ever since we first started <laughs> going to like events when we were BPW, I remember there was a guy who was on the circuit. He must have been on the email <laughs> listserv where he was like 60 something years old, clearly not part of like the fashion menswear world and would show up and just fucking crush cheese yeah. cubes all day, all night. But the, okay. So despite this guy being a fucking freeloading slob credit to the German hospitality of the Mers B staff, because they were fully locked in as if this guy was Jeremy Allen white himself yeah. <laughs> trying on yeah. stuff. It was incredible to see the store is beautiful. Check it out. 359 canal. If uh, we missed you, or you missed us, our apologies. The content is behind the paywall. And just swing by and take a browse. Great fucking team. Great fucking gear. So much more than white tees. My favorite is that quarter zip, dude. Yeah. And despite the ratio Ooh. being 102% men. Why are we even mentioning the ratio? You were able oh. to help out a young gentleman. Yeah. Um, fuck? I don't right? know. Okay. So oh, you took his penis and went. No, it's it goes here. So shout out Evan. I met this guy, Evan, who and I had a few of these conversations, which is along the lines of if I had to sum it up, throwing fits changed my life. And at first I'm like, oh, with like various dudes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And at first I'm like, that's too much responsibility for a neurodivergent brain and a Swiss cheese brain to yep. ever have. But it's always appreciate. I'm always appreciative to hear that for sure. And you know me, I'm humble and sincere and love chopping up with everyone. But he is so fucking humble, bro. It's fucking sick. <laughs> 
<laughs> so he's like a newly minted TikToker and he's got some juice. He's a handsome guy. And so I, I meet him. Then I bust outside for a dart just to kind of like, again, try to fucking get the energy levels somewhere close to fucking cruising altitude and not psycho mode. And I come back in and I meet a female fan. <gasps> Could you imagine the chick wearing the Barcelona Messi jersey? You might have oh, seen her the one. Yeah. So not only is it amazing to meet one of the few rarer than a Fremen, dude. Well, <laughs> Mia Khalifa did say she's a fan. So, you know, so there's maybe two. Yeah. There's and literally right. dozens of them. And yeah, exactly. And um, she was with three of her um, homies who are all women as well. Homies. So, so we had a nice little group. And uh, the homie Evan is like, you know, in the circle of trust, the conversation that's happening. We're like, you bring him in. No, I didn't. So we're all just chilling there. And um, as the conversation develops, they go, oh, wait, like, are you friends with Evan? And they're like, oh, no, we haven't even met. And I was like, Evan. This crowd is now yours. The bitches. Uh, the bitches, Evan. And I literally turned around and I shook everyone's hand. I thanked, I thanked them for coming and for meeting them. And I said, my work here is done. And I walked away. I see Evan later. I'm like, yo, how did it go? Did the finesse finesse? He goes, I got two numbers. 50% Whoa. from the field, bro. Wait, he went to, he got two numbers from the same group of girls? That's wild. Dude, he's a handsome guy. Because normally. I'm like, that's definitely part of why he's popping up on TikTok. I told yeah. him as much. I'm like, yeah, you're yeah. a hot dude. Yeah. I don't know if you. uh watch movies uh heard of them but there's a film called a beautiful mind <laughs> yeah. where the mathematician who doesn't have a nerd well i guess he is actually very Are you joking me yeah exactly what's his name john his name's russell crowe um <laughs> he says you never go for the baddest baddie you go for the seven you go for the six and a half you go for the four See, i loved math <laughs> if all the horn dogs go for the dime yep too many dicks in the kitchen um and i say this completely so it's crazy that so sorry so it's crazy that this guy he said to rizzed up and he didn't pull i guess but i guess he got numbers oh a number from, is a number it's the first time i know but i'm saying uh from the same group that's wild i mean listen i say this respectfully they were all lovely women inside and out um and definitely fe feel it felt like uh age-wise they all had a nice little demographic link up going. I was the old guy and had to, uh, yeah. again, excuse myself to mingle and continue my hosting duties. But I was like, damn, dude, they asked me what I do and who I do it for. And that's it, baby. Lord knows I could never do it for myself. You're trying to get, you're trying to get do other, it for somebody else. Yeah, you're trying to get other guys uh, some, it's wing some, some wet li dick. Literally, I don't have many single friends like outside of you and a couple other dudes like straight up. I'll be totally honest. Most of my friends are married if not in long-term relationships. So I don't really function as a wingman typically. So it was right. nice to see also, that did you wingman I, could, or did you just, I could goose up Maverick real quick. Did you wingman or did you just get out of the way? Yes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who's to say, dude? When you told me you wingman, I was like, oh, you must have like fucking rizzed up some late and then like passed off. You're just like talking and then just like, okay, uh, this guy's name is Evan. I'm out of here. Yeah. I met a couple other female uh, fans as well, which is again, always like, I mean, listen, do I want to say it means more? Yeah. Yeah, duh. yeah, no they're shit. They're smarter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, there's so few of them. They're uh, emotional. Their their EQ and IQ are just so much higher right. than Sweet. young, dumb, and full of cum listeners on average. Speaking of women, women, best actress Oscar, the Oscars. Yeah, you didn't watch a single second. So you I was on, on a flight plane. back. I was on a flight back. I thought I would have live TV. Um, I'm not sure. I tried like once or twice, but because I think like once you get back into like American air space or like whatever region uh, Delta has like streaming rights with whoever the fuck. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll catch like the last two hours of the Oscars. And then I got too locked in with um, other shows. So I didn't even try anymore. But like, so I'm completely in the dark. Like what happened to the Oscars? I want to know what were your personal fucking dubs? <laughs> Who, what were the fits like? Were there any like memeable moments besides like, naked John Cena? Right. I'm surprised that you were quiet on the meme uh, group chat, by the way. I was watching the award show. You weren't on your phone. No. You weren't scrolling Twitter? No. Shut up. And you know why? Shut the fuck up. This is my, the hottest take because you were like, oh, you got some hot takes. Not really. But the hottest is that this was the best Oscars telecast in as as far. I mean, as far back as I can remember. In terms of what, like entertainment or like it like went off without a hitch? Uh, Both. Kimmel didn't totally brick. There was some good fun bits a la Cena. Uh, I think that the only issue I had with actual awards themselves was that I think Lily Gladstone deserved that best actress mm. for Killers. Emma you Stone would, already has a best actress Oscar. You would tell Lily Gladstone that you live in Bedside. You tell Emma Stone that you live in Clint Hill. Yes, 100%. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there it is. There it and is. Um, 
Are it, you pissed that your boy Marty got fucking? No, I knew it was no chance. I mean, everyone knew that Sloppenheimer was going to come in and just dominate I know, for the but, most part. But you're as a Marty film bro, as a Chad, no. like you were like killers off killers over everything, bro. I, I think that it was uh, my one thing is like I was surprised that Leo was not nominated. We already he wasn't nominated. Him. No, we already talked about this on on the on the pod. Yeah, he oh, did. Right. So he wasn't even there. He must have loved that. He doesn't want to be. I there. saw I saw him at a pre party hanging out with Tiana Taylor, who are both in the right. the upcoming PTA movie. Um. And I think, yeah, maybe he just does want to like, yeah, I just want to do Molly and go to a pre-party and then like not have to wear sunglasses and, and uh, grind my teeth yeah. into Bolivian in I, front of the entire country. I don't, I don't want to have to take off my Kendall Roy hat. Yeah. Um, so other than that, and, and honestly, by the way, I love Poor Things. Poor Things won a, a lot of awards as well. One of uh, my favorite movies. Honestly, I like Poor Things better than Killers, if I'm being totally mm. frank. All right. um, but Barbie and, was your number one. Well, and then, yo, dude, Gosling, bro. Let's talk about fucking movie stars. This guy, <laughs> he's incredible. A national treasure. Did you see the performance like after the fact? I haven't seen a single yeah, thing um, except the two memes that I made this morning. <laughs> Which honestly, like as much as everyone know Killian Murphy was going to win, um, I hated that Giamatti had to be the butt of our joke. That oh, meme. Sorry. Because. Sorry. Because you really never, appreciate that. You didn't see the holdovers, did you? I did. What are you talking oh, about? You did did yeah. you like it? It's streaming on Peacock. I liked it, but it's like. <laughs> it's streaming on Peacock. I liked it, but it's like. Don't worry, we have Dead Poet Society at home. It's better. Oh, I mean, all right, RIP to Robin Williams. Also, but- I don't support plagiarists, so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. Which, do you believe that? That it, the guy plagiarized the other guy? Uh, they- <laughs> I don't know, dude. There was even some shit with killers where it's like who wrote people. Uh, the the best rumor I've seen for real film heads. Just bear with me for five minutes. Of is that they, I would never bully you. They or belittle uh, your interest. The brain trust of of, <laughs> of Marty, Leo, and, and Bobby De Niro. They brought in PTA in the la, in the twenty fifth hour to rewrite the script. This is a. Is there any truth kernel of truth to this rumor? Or is I, it a conspiracy theory? I, I think it. I think it's it's a blind item. Okay. Which what you see is on Dumois? No. But the the deal kind of is like PTA come in, um, uncredited rewrite. Okay. And then Leo then makes himself available to then star oh. in the next PTA joint, which oh, is a little fucking horse trading. And not that I don't think Leo wouldn't work with PTA. A little uh, Indian giving, if you will. <laughs> That's when you give and take something back, which is very offensive. Yeah. Anyway, welcome that's what to, I heard. Welcome to Hollywood, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard. But no, honestly, it was... Uh, and, yo, the pace of the show, they fucking finally figured it out. It? So it started at 7 and it ended at 11. Oh No, but like that whole... That's my flight. <laughs> that's better you than normal. The, you could have been in the DR. <laughs> I could have. But speaking of bars being low, I mean, again, I think yeah. people are expecting yeah. it to really fucking suck. And then... So so this is the big, the big takeaways. Gosling, movie star, and then our DJ... Listen, did I want him to win Best Supporting Actor over the other fucking extremely talented people in that category? Did I think uh, Sessa, Dominic Sessa from The Holdover mm. should have been nominated? Which I've seen, by the way. Which you, uh, streaming on Peacock. Listen, it is a nice film. It's not like revol- I thought that, uh, what's her name? She was great. And oh. Won, right? Yeah, Rudolph. Won. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's her first name? Lisan. Al good. I don't what? Know. I was gonna say a dune. I was making a dune. Oh, joke. I just don't know. Her. I just don't know her name. No, I don't. I, it's something Rudolph. But she was fire. Yeah, um, she's incredible. She, and she and she deservedly won that category. Got it. Um, even though, like you know, shout out Jodie Foster, whatever. No one want, wants to watch the movie about Jody old. Bi- yeah, it was nominated for the old bitches swimming movie. What? Apparently, that you don't. There's the movie about the chick who swam across the English Channel and then like from Dunkirk. Florida to Cuba. <laughs> But the whole thing is speaking of like plagiarism or even just cap, like her story that they turned into a biopic that Jodie Foster and Annette Benning were nominated for is like not true necessarily. And just this, like the holdovers streaming on. Well, first of all, it's a that one is nonfiction. One is a biopic <laughs> and one is a fictional story. I'm not saying again, I'm trying to attribute who or who didn't write it anyway. Uh, Do you think that RDJ? This- my point is just that the this man, I know he's like sober now and his journey is incredible and he's beloved mainly because he played fucking Iron Man, Iron Man, Tony Stark. But who, you know, they wanted Tom Cruise to uh, really. Yeah, they made the right call. They would have uh, the Marvel that MCU would have never taken off if TC had been fucking Tony. Yeah. Right. I, th- I mean, I don't know. TC is TC. But then we wouldn't have uh, Edge of Tomorrow. 
Yeah, that first Iron Man came out like Top Gun Maverick, two thousand eight or something. Yeah. What was Tom Cruise's last non-action role? Jerry Maguire, Tropic Thunder. Oh, all timer. Great fucking. But he's only he's only done speaking R D speaking R D J. He's only done yeah doing blackface. He's only done action since then. Anyway, so sorry. So R D J. Just just the man sucks. The no the amount of charisma it's oh. like unfair. Really? Whereas like Gosling turns it on, and he turned it on for the Ken performance, which was an absolute highlight. Um, and shout out all my Barbie apologists out there. But no, R D J is just like the man is just has no off switch. It's incredible. Mm, sounds kind of like a nightmare blunt or team situation. He, he like low key was riffing with Kimmel about like his drug addiction, which was great in the opening monologue, which oh. I thought was fu- which was I mean, you know, okay, which was fire. Um, did you know? Oh, sorry. That Oppenheimer and Godzilla minus one is that the name of it? Yeah, great movie. I, are the or, only the only two films where the original and the sequel both won Academy Awards. In the same year. What what is the wait, Oppenheimer is a sequel? What are you saying? What did you sorry, you say that again? The original and its sequel. Oppenheimer, Godzilla minus one. Do you not know? Oh, I see what I see what you're saying. Because Godzilla is was because of nuclear bombs it exists. Is that the current um lore though in like the monsters? Also, universe? Godzilla minus one uh literally takes place in like the like the 10 years of post-war Japan. What are you I, fucking... Sorry, I see, come the, on. I see the joke you were making. I was actually like trying to like lock in and be like, yo, he's got a piece of cinema trivia that I need to memorize and parrot the next time I'm out with the <laughs> film bros. No. Um, and then the one big thing for me with all the fits is that... Um, oh, yeah. How were they? All right. The most troubling trend is that on Hollywood's biggest night where we would love as fans of cinema to show fucking respect to the pedophiles that run this industry. To the art form. Just wear some neckwear. There was fucking so many either air bow ties or just then lack thereof where shit is just flying in the wind. I'm like, wear a fucking bow tie. The Oscars is usually the most like buttoned up and most kind of like traditional conservative men's fits Mm -hmm. unless you're uh, uh, Coleman Domingo. um, Who looked fantastic, chromed out. Yeah, but so people are wearing tuxedos normally, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So an air, when you say air tie, is it like completely buttoned up? Ruffalo was buttoned up with nothing. And this is a man who should have won Best Supporting Actor, in my opinion. So he won Best Supporting Actor. um, RJ. Oh, that's right. For Toppenheimer. Terrible. Mm, People really liked him in that. I know you said Damon makes it for you, right? What? Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon? Yeah. Yeah. When you said that was your favorite part of the movie. We've talked about this on pod. Oh, and um, what's the other guy? The other professor. Josh Hartnett? Josh Hartnett. Who, Him and Damon. Uh, a lot of because Oppenheimer won so many awards. There's a lot of opportunity to thank this stacked cast. Nobody mentioned Hartnett once. Damn, I know. I loved him too. I thought he was fantastic. I Casey Affleck. Who was he? Uh, the uh, one of the ops. Oh, I did not like the Safty bro. Benny Safty. He was great. I nah, thought. his Russian accent was horrendous. Really? Yeah. He was great in Good Time, which I rewatched recently. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a movie. That's a uh, that's actually my favorite. Sa- that's a movie, not a Larry Saturday. There's night. only three Safety Bros. Bros. Flicks that I think I'm getting that correct. I actually prefer Good Time to Uncut Gems. Mm. Hot take. Um. So yeah, that that weird fucking no necktie thing really bothered me. And then I literally no, literally not a single one. There were, I mean, Cillian Murphy had a cumber, Killian Murphy had a cummerbund and a bow tie, and there were you know, people being respectful to, again, Hollywood's biggest night. But I was, this is a troubling trend and I don't like the Oscars going casual. Mm. Uh, One guy that also went sans neckwear that I hate to begrudgingly admit looked fantastic is Bradley Cooper in the Louis Vuitton double-breasted suit with the turquoise button details. And that sounds very familiar to a certain pair of jeans. Ooh, Bradley Capper. (laughs) Bradley fucking Steeler. Um, Bradley fucking copier. Yeah. Though I guess that's more of a Pharrell issue. But um, yeah. And, you know, he brought his mom as always. OK, cool, dude. We get it. Fucking we get it. Find You're, a new slant. We, well, we can't it. bring Gigi Hadid because like no. age gap. We get it, Bradley. What is this? The licorice pizza fucking sequel. All right, I won't say anything. Um, What? Well, I had a joke that I was trying to say five times. Uh, say right let now. me ask you this. No, it's OK. Did anyone say free Palestine or say some shit about Zionism? Like yeah, uh, Jonathan Glazer. No one said free Palestine. Glazer? Yeah, Jonathan Glazer. Who is that? He's a very famous British director. 
But he's his name's Glazer. Yeah, he did uh, Zone of Interest. Oh, okay. Which I hated. Uh -oh. Um, but one. Uh oh. But one best foreign film because Anatomy of a Fall. And the, the French fucking council of film or whatever they're called was like, no, we're going to make this like a best picture nom and not a best foreign picture nom. And they fucked that up. So Glazer wins for zone of interest and gets up there and dances around it, but like at least acknowledged it. And he was uh, mainly the only one besides I saw a guy wearing a, the pins. Uh, oh, there was a lot of that because I saw one guy. Rami, okay. Ruffalo. Oh, oh you well, know. Yeah. All right. Um, but uh, but I thought it was actually a really entertaining award show. And I was surprised how much fun I had and how much I was totally off my phone. No way. Yeah. Were you at an Oscars party? No, I was just watching with Jenna. Oh. That's how good it was that she was even like, I'm going to stay up past my bedtime and like lock in. Wow. I know. Um, well, you had a big movie vacation while I was on actual vacation. You also saw Dune 2. Ah! Spectacular. Yeah. Movie of the year. So, movie of the year is on the, it's already on the fitties list, right? Yeah. I don't see, I don't see any way that, that, that shit is getting topped, bro. So, well, <laughs> nice. Um, it's interesting. So I have, I feel like Dune 2 has been surprisingly divisive. What? Yeah. I know a lot of people that came out and they're like, it was like the hype train was like too much mm. where the excitement for it was like too high and they saw it and they had like qualms with, I, I, I've been trying to go spoiler free because I am going to go see it. Mm -hmm. I have some friends that were like, I prefer Dune 1 yes. over Dune 2. Mm -hmm. Some that were just like, oh, it was just, it was too like single note um, in terms of like the sets and environments and like worlds and too focused on like one or two like houses and not on the other families or, or other houses. Although I guess like uh, there is source, source material that they have to base it on, you know, well, Rebecca for yes, exactly. And the source material is like more diverse than what we see. Of course. But obviously fucking then has to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, chop it down. Um, he's just Sic Sicario it down. <laughs> uh, but I guess the Rebecca Ferguson house is getting its own TV show. Did you know really? that? Yeah. Oh, I hope they don't do that. On Max. I just want one more flick. Dune Messiah would be the next one. And then I want them to shut it down. Mm. There's like, I think before he died, Frank Herbert wrote six books and they're all, you know, fucking tomes. Right. And it's like, I don't need that many. I would just love a trill. I mean, bro, it's like literally you watch something like this and, and you, I can't even imagine how anyone would ever sit through a piece of shit Marvel movie. Like it's, right. it's not even, they shouldn't even be considered the same fucking genre. How, uh, IMAX? No. And so that I'm going to see it again. In IMAX. I, I yes, I have to. Okay. And that would be the one thing that I feel like I fucked up. I just saw it normal. I just saw a 70 millimeter, uh, cut, um, at like Alamo. I need to go to what IMAX. Did you eat? I ate before because I went to Raisin Cane's because there's a Raisin Cane's in downtown Brooklyn and I oh, really want to try it. I had like a little Larry Day, fit, relatively new. So I just had popcorn, popcorn what and soda. did you drink? Uh, Coke Zero. Oh, were you like, I had no alcohol, no mind fog. I, I need I to be fucking locked in when I for even, three and a half hours. Even though I see like every movie at Alamo because it's like the most convenient movie theater uh, where I live in Bed-Stuy slash Clinton Hill, depending on who I'm talking to, Lily Gladstone or uh, Emma Stone. But um. I don't ever drink with that. I take it too seriously, dude. I'm not having a single beer. It's the only time. The only thing that could get me sober is the magic of cinema. I know I'm not trying to belittle your interest, but when you say shit like that, bro. What? Sorry. What yeah, bro. I, I can't fucking drink while I'm watching a movie because I take it too seriously. It's art, bro. You got to take the art seriously. <laughs> all right. Here's my one thing to all your, the, everyone who said that Dune 1 is better. I do like Dune 1 more. I oh, really do. My, but, you, but so Dune 1 is, is I don't, a 12 and Dune 2 is a 10. There are. Neither of them are five star movies if we're going Letterbox. Whoa. But oh yeah, what was the Letterbox review? Um, my girl also hates it when I claim to be the Messiah. Um, here's my thing, right? When when you, how long into the movie did you think of that? And how much brain power was devoted to? Not much. That, that one came to me. Okay. That quip came pretty quick. Nice. When you see the movie, you'll understand. Um, when I, I feel like I already know what happened. What, like, one of my impossible yeah. to avoid this. One of my biggest regrets is not seeing uh, Dune Part One in theaters. That's crazy. I, I saw it in theaters. I've seen it four times, like on my television. It's a good rewatch. I've watched it on a plane it's too, because um, I love watching epics on of course. six inch Scale. screens. Yeah, but uh, my one thing with Dune One is that I was like, uh, it ended so. I un and I understand that. The source material, we, you know, Denny wants to do it justice and he wants to break it in half. And I'm kind of thinking of these as like 
one movie. Talk about a great double feature, by the way. Mm. Honestly, I would wreck, which is how Mia, I believe, talked about how she was going to do with her. her yeah. Um, but Dune 1 ends and I'm like, oh, I wish it ends very suddenly. <laughs> right. Um, right. As shit is like, you know, getting started with um, uh, Paul learning the ways of Islam. Yeah. The noble path. Learning how to say inshallah. Per, uh, properly. It's very <laughs> Sicario esque in that way. It's crazy you didn't see Dune 2 during Ramadan. Why wouldn't you do that? Also, Ramadan Mubarak, to- uh, Ramadan Mubarak to all our uh, Muslim, fo- Muslim I, listeners. I did, well, I already felt like I was late in seeing like the fact. I understand you've had a lot going on in terms of travel, but I was even like, damn, I got to like we had a, a huge week. And I was like, I really wish there was more free time for me to see this on opening fucking weekend. You wouldn't have been able to get tickets, though. The only IMAX tickets, IMAX tickets that were available were the 315 showing 315 a.m. Oh, so a.m. You would have gotten out. You would have like had to do a Larry right. and then gone from where you like to party to the <laughs> IMAX theater. Yeah. Smelling crazy. It's smelling crazy, dude. And then gotten out as the sun's coming up. Yeah. Which I don't think that yeah, you could do that. You could it would have been like seeing the sun rise on Arrakis. <laughs> uh, no, my only thing. Right. So one w- part one ends abruptly and I was left wanting so much more. Does Dune 2 pick up right Immedi- yeah. immediately? Yeah. That's that's what well on fact. And that first chunk of uh, Dune part two. And not that I thought Dune 2 had bad pacing, but it is long enough where I was like, if we could take like the first 30 minutes of part two and somehow like put that on, tack that onto part one, even though, I mean, you know, uh, Chani going, um, this is just the beginning is like an amazing quote to like end that first one on. If they could have moved 20 to 30 minutes of part two to part one. I'm maybe thinking that we're looking at two five star flicks, dude. Wow, real armchair armchair filmmaking. A hundred percent armchair editing. But um, Diddy, what are you doing, bro? And then the one thing that I, I I don't or I was a little disappointed about is that I don't know about you, but when it comes to movies like this, whether it's Star Wars or fucking Game of Thrones or Dune, the villains are so much more compelling to me, and you don't spend a lot of time. On Gata Prime, the home planet of the Harkonnens, well, even though that's because you do see the in, the Austin Butler introduction. My man, all right, I think I might have been a hater. This dude is a fucking psycho, and he crushes it. And uh, you should get very excited. Yeah, it's well, the villains are more compelling to you because you're a bad guy. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I just like the uh, the look, the aesthetic, and the look and the lore <laughs> well, of you, the villains you know, because is because like, they're bald. <laughs> you have empathy for them <laughs> and pale. <Yeah. laughs> no, just it, oh, it, welcome to my dune. Uh, uh, alopecia representation. Does he talk? Yeah, Austin Butler. Okay, yeah, bro. Does he use the? Does he use the voice? So you, there are moments where you're like, wait, what? Did he? Did he sneak in a little? Uh, a little uh, king. Uh, welcome to my dune. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, you're not. You're not the king. You're the prince. You're yeah. a nephew. You're yeah. not the baron. Uh, uh, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a gay nephew from my uncle. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, dude, he ain't gay. I'll tell you huh? that. Oh, no. no. But okay. they do kiss on. They do have a Brady and son kiss on the lips. Oh, yeah. I'm right. sure you've nice. seen that. Yeah, it's been impossible to uh, not see a bunch of shit, which oh, is unfortunate. And then one more thing. I know, speaking of stacked cast with Oppenheimer, this shit is almost like superstar fatigue, where I'm like, it would be maybe kind of cool to see a, a fresh face versus like everyone is a superstar. Oh, did they bring out uh, what's the fucking the bug eyed motherfucker from from Queen? Freddie Rami Mercury? Malik? Did no. they bring out Rami Malik no. the, just for like a little cameo like they do in Oppenheimer? No, no, they didn't. Who's this little fucking freak? He was in Oppenheimer. You're right. I, yes. I hate him, dude. He sucks, yeah. dude. He, he, mm. he blows. He blows. The fact you that he- want to see my Rami Malik? Mm. That's pretty good. Mm. Similar to your Shane Gillis. <laughs> um, Not enough Florence Pugh, who I love. I wish, and then she'll be a big feature in the next one. Right. And then a lot of people are criticizing the walk-in, Christopher Walken casting. Eh, <laughs> Walker's for Walkins in it. He's the emperor. Oh, wait. Oh, Austin Butler plays Sting. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. He, yeah. play, he plays the, the nephew of. Yeah. He plays uh, Batista's brother. Yeah. Oh, 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 Fields of Gold. <laughs> You'll remember me when uh... I. It's crazy to me that people have told you. I understand preferring part one and part two. I have not talked to a single person or seen a single take that wasn't. This is fucking spectacular. And I predict that much like Lord of the Rings. Um, I think it'll, the, it'll I think, also I think it's going to clean up at next year. I think Oscars. a lot of the purists are a little perturbed. Purists. The, Fucking nerds. Well, come on, bro. I mean, they gave you they gave you Dune too. Um, sure. are a little perturbed at like they went in expecting more. Uh, 
uh, uh, staying faithful to like the OG shit. And I, I don't know. I don't know it. I don't. There's definitely creative license. In, or, or Denny takes creative license with the source material because there's just like too much and you got to pick and choose. Um, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I actually don't want to hate on the purists and the nerds because watching these movies, I, I get why people are fucking nerds, dude. I get it. Like this shit is, I, it's you so good. Fan, you should get into fantasy. <sighs> I'm not that guy. You don't know that. Have you ever tried? Yeah, I don't. I'm not a huge fucking Lord of the Rings Did guy. Did you ever read Potter? No, fuck no, dude. That's for babies. Well, you can't read. It's for babies. You are a baby. I've never seen. You are a baby. You should read these books. I've never. You should e learn how to read and read the Harry Potter books. How about this? I've never even seen the Harry Potter film. I haven't really either. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you get into fantasy? You love know. fucking. Now I like sci-fi. You, sci you love Japanese shit now. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to talk. So get into fucking man manga or whatever. Nah. You and Jay should go fucking hang out. I do weekend. want to see Godzilla Minus One. That's the. That's, you seen it? No, not yet. Is it good? It's all right. Where did you watch it? At a movie theater. Oh, damn. Yeah. Is it like. Uh, it's either that or Poor Things. <laughs> I mean, have we get Poor Things was good. No, I think the timing didn't work. Out I love the monster for shit like uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. Kong Skull Island. I love that shit, dude. So I want to see Minus yes. One. Yeah. Um, well, I also watched a bunch of art this past weekend. Couldn't really. Yo, so my new thing is brand new. I don't know if I'm going to watch movies on planes anymore. I think my new shit is watching like garbage time TV, mm -hmm. which you never stream that shit. I no. know it's I know this is a fucking Jimmy Discover streaming. <laughs> you never stream garbage TV. No. Except for reality TV, because like you're only watching or for us, we're only watching like prestige TV, yeah. appointment TV, reality TV on streaming. I, bro, and when you watch garbage TV, the commercial breaks are so long, like triple D, 20 minute commercial breaks. Absolutely. I put on Bar Rescue. Yeah. Um, I don't know what compelled me to do this, but for my four hour flight down to DR, <laughs> I put on, I watched four hours. <laughs> It's so much Bar Rescue. Of Bar Rescue. But it's only 42 minute episodes. Only? That's very. Wait. Bar Rescue is an hour long TV slot. So it's 18 minute commercials. And like the commercials obviously always happen at the most compelling moments where it's oh, like, oh, yeah. Shut it down. That's good editing, dude. Yeah. There's raw chicken in this kitchen. Shut it down. Got the commercial. <laughs> That's your taffer? Uh, I got to work on it. Yeah, because I was going to say, he, he's way more like. Is he like a, he's like a big mountain of a man. Why? That's why he's so scared. You know that I'm going to push you, right? <laughs> you know that I want you to succeed, right? That's my taffer. That's pretty good. Um, and by good, I just mean hilarious visual. I don't know. If why are you drinking behind the bar? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want him to fail. Uh, yeah. <laughs> taffer fucking crushed four episodes. Unfortunately, it wasn't vintage Taffer because it was... What the, season are we on of that show even? Uh, this was 2021 in season eight. Oh. So it was the COVID, the COVID season. Ooh, yikes. So it's kind of a bummer. And also he was like, I'm going to single-handedly save the hospitality industry in my hometown of Las Vegas Ooh. by like, uh, you know, making sure every COVID bar has like, or every bar in COVID has like a uh, 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 hand bacteria fucking laser machine or like... <laughs> The good people at Blue Zone gave us this. It removes all bacteria from the fucking area. Is he masked up on those episodes? So everyone's masked up. They Ugh. can't stress test properly because they can only let in like 10 people at right, a time. Right, right, right. So like the 10 people that come in have to order like five entrees and three drinks. Um, sounds actually kind of like. Sounds awesome. Uh, speaking of low bars, that's a low bar for Bar Rescue. I want to see him just spitting. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see the fucking emotion on his face because he cares so much. Well, it's clear that like <laughs> in the beginning of the episode, everyone's masked up. And then as the four day thing progresses, people are like taking their mask off and like fucking dapping up and shit, whatever. <laughs> um, so it's a bit odd. And also he can't be as hard on them because everyone's like suffering from, from right. COVID. Of course. But he's like, I want to know, is it are you is it because of COVID or is it because of bad management decisions? It's always bad yes. management decisions. It always, um, it always is. That's why they got to bring in the rescuer, dude. Yeah, unfortunately, I was so stoked. to wa I watched four episodes on the way down. I was like, yes, another four hour flight back. I can't wait to watch another like four or five episodes. Mm -hmm. Locking in. I only had one more episode left. What a bummer. It was his 200th bar rescue. Oh, wow. Did they do something special? Uh, it was just like a family that was like seriously in debt. They got evicted from their home. He just mentioned that it was his 200th bar rescue about 17 times. <laughs> So then, thank you for your service, John. I fucking Taffer. locked in on a show that I've always loved, but again, the commercial breaks have always been like the barrier to me getting continuing to be really into it. Deadliest Catch, damn. Which, again, super long commercial Are these breaks. Both TLC shows. 
or Bar Rescue, I think, is Spike TV. <laughs> Dude, let's go. Or whatever Spike TV became. For uh, a TV channel, finally, for fucking guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's run by Shane Gillis. Um, <laughs> and then... Guy, sh- guy Shalud. Uh, Deadly Halud. Catch is on Discovery. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah. Shy Halud. Guy Halud. Yes. Right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now you get it. No, no, I got it. I just oh. was trying to, you know... Well, I'm fucking about the... to be shy Hulu, bro. The way I'm about to stream these uh, Deadliest Catch. Episodes. Really? You're that locked? So it's such a waste of time. <sighs> Back, it's background TV. Or you, you want to. That's like, the thing. What, background you... TV became such for Because you know how you're super locked in yeah, on when you're watching on an airplane. Um, they've also completely revamped Deadliest Catch where it used to just be like. We're catching crab now. Alaskan it's be- king crab now. Mm, well, they just opened up the Bayery Crab Fishery, which is a 90 million dollar payday. I'm sure. Um, also they introduced this element where there's a lot of illegal poachers from, I don't know, maybe we're near the Russia U S border and all of a sudden there's fucking Ivan and Vladimir are stalled out. Wait, this shit is getting political. It's getting crazy. Wow. So like there's all, so like they're way out there. They're like, uh, Siggy, do you know who, uh, that boat is? Like, can you see them? Is that, is that, a, is that a dragger? <laughs> and then they, they're like, uh, dragger, uh, you know, Boat off my bow. This is time bandit. Like, are you a crabber or a drag? You fishing? And like, <laughs> we are dog maintenance. And they're like, wait, what? And then they like fuck up. They steal their pots and they like fuck up their pots. So they're they take a fucked up pot and they turn it into this like porcupine of metal and drop it down. So that when the trawlers come with their nets, it it ruins their right, net for sure. And like the coast guard is involved. So it's actually turning into like very anti Russian propaganda slash like <laughs> it's very clear. They keep cutting to like the American flag. It's <laughs> Getting crazy. And like, also, these idiots are like going into fucking, you know, ru- disputed Russian US waters, which is like, oh, I want my fucking crab. If you're um, an aquatic poacher, are you a pirate? No, I just think you're an illegal fisherman. The the, the seafood industry is very opaque and very fucked up. Yeah. Uh, I, I talked about the North Korean slave labor you in did. China last week. <laughs> this pie is getting so geopolitical, dude. I love um, it. You should, so much shit. Uh, there's a book by Ian Urbina called uh, Fuck, I forget what it's called, but it's about like every story, every chapter is like it's 400 pages or so, but every chapter is like a vignette of like different fucked up practices in like mm. the maritime world. So whether it's like cruise ships dumping chemicals waste yeah uh cambodian fucking slaves on like korea on like north korean ships Somali pirates filipinos that are kind of like work on cruise ships that are like basically indentured servant servants right pirates uh all that shit it's like pretty good and like basically the main thing is that there's maritime law does not exist yeah Right. Effectively. So like anybody that's how you beat a child. Over any, international exactly. Waters. Anybody that's out there can just do whatever the fuck they want. It's actually great. Um, if you're a libertarian. So could you think Taffer could uh, be the captain of one of these uh, deadliest catch uh, vessels? I don't know. Cool but crossover. Honestly, whenever I'm watching deadliest catch, it's me like eating. Ch- I'm the guy in the couch. Eating ch- like, ah, I could do that. Yeah, dude. Dirty jobs. <laughs> but someone's got to do it. It brings me to my question yes, because sir. I really think that. God forbid we fucking take some time out for ourselves <laughs> and I got, you know, I don't know, two weeks to kill or something or a month. What's stopping me from going to Dutch Harbor, Alaska, <laughs> signing up with Siggy or fucking Wild Bill or yo, Deadly Catch it did get woke. Um, there are now <laughs> female captains and a bla- and one black guy. Um, thanks, woke. More like woke is catch. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I think I th- I think. Uh, it's the deadliest. It is the it is the deadliest catch. I think I could do it. You've been you've been deadliest catch pill. There's no chance. I think you I could. Survive. I think I could green. How hor- strong of a swimmer are you? God forbid you go overboard. Well, you're just in like a floaty suit. I oh. think that I could greenhorn it for a season where you're just like hauling shit. I mean, and it's great. Like you're pranking each. You're pranking other boats. You're chilling with your boys. Uh, you, there's like hazing where it's like drink fish blood or like eat like a cod intestine. <laughs> you're just like doing manual labor like eight hours at a time. Yeah fucking making crazy money sure um seasonal job you know like if i'm the if i'm the green horn i'm making dinner for everyone mm. i'm fucking i'm di- I, you can do that you can be a chef i don't want to wash the dishes no you have to do both oh um everyone i mean you would love it everyone's fucking smoking constantly yeah i can imagine uh yeah i think i think i could do it which is like that's probably the hardest 
job I think I could do. I, I don't know if like I mean I don't I physically think this and might, mentally this might be some hubris talking. I don't know if you could survive. How long are their are their trips like out to sea? Like two weeks. Oh, eh, maybe so you just lock in. You're doing like crazy manual physical labor for like you know. 19 hours at a time. Yeah. It's repetitive, but I think there's like a Zen and a beauty in that. No, absolutely. Routine is good. Uh, I think that- they're so jacked up and they're all just like making crazy money. And like, there's got to be no better feeling than seeing a pot come up, all, you know, whether it's like teeming with whether fucking it's pot, crab, whether it's pot one off the string that's been soaking for five hours or, you know, <laughs> you take a chance and you go 250 meters down uh, real deep on the slime bank. Do they get to eat any of the crab? I don't think so. Cause like it's that's too valuable livelihood. Yeah. yeah they, but- they eat like, they're just eating like instant ramen for two weeks. That's kind of dope. Yeah. We love instant ramen on this show. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't think you could do it, but what it makes me think of is that would be its own fire reality TV show is they bring average people into the deadliest catch. Yeah. See and if they, they all just fucking, fucking survive, die. See if they can live or die, dude, on some like naked and afraid shit. What's the hardest job you think you could do? Whether it's like physical, men, uh, physical, psychological, mental. Um... I have no skills. Besides podcaster. I have no, you're right. I have no skills and God forbid this ended tomorrow. One of my greatest fears is like, what would I do for employment? I think I've said that before. I truly do worry about that. So full time, full time influencer. (sighs) I mean, I sure, but I don't want to be that guy. Um, You're the hardest job. I could be a teacher. No, you couldn't. (laughs) No, a hundred. Sorry. Yes, you can, Larry. A hundred percent. What age of student? Young. How young? Because. So when I was a camp counselor, the youngest. How long ago was that? De- decades. But but well, how old were you? 17? I was, yeah, I was in college. I okay. did. Uh, I think seven year old boys. And you, and you and you <laughs> taught, don't, don't clip that. You taught them. No. Or you made sure they didn't die. <laughs> yes. The latter. But what do you actually need to teach a fucking kid? How to read? I guess yeah. you got to learn how to read. Or, or like counting the alphabet, basic arithmetic. Yeah. Come on, bro. I guess I'm not that stupid. You could use AI. Yeah. And I guess my point is that I'm just acknowledging how important and difficult and hard and crucial it is uh, to be a teacher in America. Yeah. And I think I could I think I could tap in. That's kind of crazy because I actually thought that I'm really good with kids, bro. Don't clip that out. But in like a <laughs> I'm great with kids. Yeah. Kids. I don't want kids, but I'm really you know why? Because I'm baby. Kids love this guy. Yeah. Um, that's interesting for real. Cause I I thought that uh teaching was gonna be my career. Yeah. Mainly because I didn't know what else I wanted to do and didn't have any real skills after going to and a major in, in geography. geography. Yeah, there you go. So it's like those that can't teach. Right. Which is kind of who we are. Do you think like if we did like a real speaking of fucking respecting all griffs from last week, but do you think if we did like a fake ass like podcast master class, like people would sign up and listen to us teach them how to be Riz gods? Because <laughs> you can't from- teach charisma, dude. Yeah. No. You can't no. No. When we did our, our show, Call from Summerhouse wanted to be a podcaster. I th- I do think that a lot of people like think it's really easy and they just get the mic and they just like fucking freeze or whatever. Um I I think that teaching, yes, is probably one of the most difficult jobs, especially in like the public school system. Yes. Uh, I have friends that are teachers and they are. I don't know how they do it. Are they miserable? No, because they're already such good people. And they're fulfilled by doing the Lord's work, truly. And they like if I, I mean, I did work at a school for one year when I graduated and I at that was. After that, and I wasn't even like full full time teaching. I was like, I don't want to be a teacher. This fucking sucks. What were you like? You were in, in, Th- when in, I was in Thailand. Yeah, were you like, oh, you're teaching English? English. I was in, no, I was in English. I was an assistant art teacher and like an <laughs> RA for like the boarding students. Wait, why? How? What were your qualifications to be an art teacher? Your mom's? None. No. Did you flex your mom? My mom's an artist. No, they were just like, oh, you seem like you can like carry a lot of paint around. <laughs> <laughs> you seem so strong. <laughs> the, yeah, the, and, uh, I, and I was and I got along with our teacher. Okay. Natalie. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, shout out Natalie. Yeah. She hot. No. No. Oh, damn. Not at all. Because it could be like a nice little fucking student pupil situation. Though I guess you're not really a, a pupil. That's more that of a movie? student. Oh. No, there's app pupil, but that's like a Nazi neighbor type situation. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, you taught yourself this past weekend <laughs> that you love raising canes. No, or, no. Oh, wait, you don't like it? No. Well, you had a learning experience. That's where the transition is. Yeah. Transition. God. Have you familiar with Raising Kings? I've never had it, though. We th- I remember there's only been. Well, I guess there's now at two. least two in, one in, in down, New York. There's one in downtown Brooklyn on Fulton and the other one is Astor. Times Square. No, oh, there's, there's three. three now. There's Astor Place one. Right. Yeah. Um, 
I've just heard about it so much. Through Barstool? <laughs> Who is they're a big sponsor? I it's just like there are people that are such caniacs, dude. That like oh. I, I was like, all right, let me fucking let me see what all the hoop was about. Also, fried chicken, goaded food. Sure. I didn't have so I got the standard fare, which are tendies, fries, coleslaw, and then their Texas toast. Okay. And then the big thing is the cane sauce, right? Right, 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 right. right. Uh let's just let me just say this. I have had a myriad of better chicken tenders in my entire life. Fingies, tendies, whatever you want to call them. Like Popeye's immediately better off. Yeah, okay. Uh, this Good. is a white people brand, so the seasoning on the chicken just is like non-existent. What is it? Like just salt? I mean, I saw a little bit of pepper in, in that breading. Uh, they're juicy and they're fresh, and I think that's why people like them. And also, I How think there's the, so yeah. much hype around it. So the tenders are fine. How was the sauce? I'll get there. Sorry. Tenders are fine. Coleslaw. Sauce? How's the sauce? It's co- coleslaw, fine. Fries, pretty fucking mid. Crinkle? Crinkle. Ugh. But a crinkle shoestring. What? Normally a crinkle. What? Like a, normally it's like a fat chode. These are like long crinkles. These are like sandworm esque, I would say. Do they curl? No, oh, those, are, those, would be, those would be curly fries. Shoe shoe, I might shoe even shoe be shoe using shoestring as a wrong term, but they're like a longer, skinny fry. How long are they? I got one that was like pretty fucking long, dude. That's full, like, again, full fucking Shai Hulud. That's like Shai Hulud length. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in your butt. <laughs> so here's what rocks. The Texas toast, right? So the piece of garlic bread. Um, it's really fucking good. How thick is it? You, the viral thing is that people, it's thick enough to be split open a la a bun, and then you can make like a little fucking uh, Sammy if sure. you want. Um, I asked, so I did some research, and apparently you got to go B.O.B. Butter on both sides. Oh. So they fucked that up and they didn't do it. Bombs so over bag that? Yeah, right. Um, last week's outro music. Um, so one side is like perfectly toasty and buttery and garlicky and fantastic. And the other side is just this soft, flaccid white bread. And I'm like, now you know what it's like to pod with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. The other side of the Cane's Texas toast. So they fucked up my order in that regard. I will say, man. The sauce is unlike anything I've ever tasted, and it is quite delicious. And without the sauce, this place would not fucking exist. Is it not just ketchup, mayo, and some spices? I can't. I can't. Just, I can't. Compa- it's, it's, it's like the sixth flavor. It's not umami. It's not I, sweet, sour, I, I, spicy. I, I like I can't compare. It's definitely not spicy. I'll tell you that. Um, and then the move I've realized is not just make sure that everything is slathered in this fucking cane sauce. But the best bite, weirdly, is you just combine everything and you just make a, so you fucking, make a sandwich. Yeah, I didn't I didn't go sandwich mode with it, but I I you piled high just like a big bite and I was like, yeah, I think this is the best way that you should should consume it, but that's just like so sloppy and decadent and yeah. gross and not the way that I want to eat like a tray of a bunch of different ingredients, just me personally. Did it fuck up your little tummy? No, not at all. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, I was totally locked in and fine for Dune Part Two. Um, I'm happy I tried it. It wasn't bad, but never again. The, the people no, and I would get it again especially with like a homie who had never tried it before. I'm not going to be like, oh, no, it's bad. But the people that like swear by this shit, I'm like, have you ever had good chicken? The yeah. chicken is very average. It's kind of the same way with like Chick-fil-A motherfuckers where it's like, like, what, I don't know, what do they call them? Like chick fil Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, where they're like, oh, it's the best. Like I fucking people get it for, you know, they get I also three think meals it's overrated day. as well. Hella overrated. Popeye's. Not overrated. No, Popeyes is perfectly rated in that. But also, Pop- is goaded. but Popeyes doesn't have like a hive the way that like Chick Fil A and mm, Raising Cane's does. I'm pretty sure the chicken sandwich created a fucking um a jihad, a la Paul Muadib. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Popeyes has like stands like that. Um, which is really which no? is weird because I think that it is the, it is my it's top the best fast two food. fast food, if not one. What's the other one? <sighs> kind of depends. You Quiz, know Quiznos, <laughs> Yo, dude. You and you and fucking Quiznos. Yo, there's dude. a Quiznos. I I forewent an opportunity to have Quiznos, which is crazy because we also fucked up in Vegas and we could have had Quiznos yep. and we had CPK brunch. Terrible. <laughs> which sucks. It was so bad. What do we order? Like. Sam- I had like sandwiches. A, I had like a chicken pesto sandwich or something, and I had a turkey club, <laughs> and it was Disgusting. it was fucking dog shit. Yeah. Um. My first experience with a fast food restaurant over the past weekend was I was in the Santa Domingo airport mm-hmm. and a lot of food. Sorry, is, I don't know why I laughed at that. A lot of food is before security and we're like, uh, that's weird. Um, yeah. So we went through security and before going to our gate, um, I 
I went to, and another homie of mine, we had never, ever had Carl's Jr. Have you had Hardee's? No. Okay, so you've never had it. Got and it's it. the same thing, right? Yeah. Just like, yeah, why do they do that? I don't know. It's some type of fucking like Puma, Adidas, I don't know, split. Yeah. But like know. one, but but Puma and Adidas have different products. It's the same well, exact shit. They're two brothers. I know, but it's the one same was exact a Nazi, I think. Yeah, but <laughs> but is I thought Hardy's and Carl's Jr. is the same shit. Carl Jr. was a Nazi. That's right. Yeah. So Carl Sr. was in World War One. <laughs> no, but I thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you're the fast foodsman, but like I thought Hardee's and Carl's Jr. are like the same thing, but just have different names according to like the region of the U.S. they're in. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Okay. I've never had Carl's Jr. before. My only association with it is that Paris Hilton commercial Mm -hmm. where she's just eating a fat patty. They went, speaking of Spike TV, there was that whole era where whether it was Carl's Jr. or Hardee's, depending on where you lived, I guess, the commercials were so sexual. Really? Yeah, it was all about like sloppy burger dripping babes, like and twins of fast food. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, not and I think Paris Hill might have been like the culmination when they got like a real fucking A lister. Maybe that incepted me from uh, when Horny Jimmy was just a wee horny lad. Yeah. Um, and that's why I wanted to try Carl Junior so bad. And Carl so, Junior will get me bitches. <laughs> a friend. So me, and my friend, I think yeah, we were the only ones that got food. Uh. Bro, Carl's Jr. is fucking disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's sloppy, bro. And maybe, you know, I understand that um, restaurants and airports, they're just licensed out to like sure. third, third party. Well, a lot of these are franchised operators. anyway. No, but it's even more so like any restaurant in an airport, at least in America, mm-hmm. like Shake Shack, they don't have like, it's not part of the Shake Shack Corporation. They're Tell just me Danny Meyer's not back there making every burger? Nope. Smashing every patty? What? So that's why like, uh, maybe, in the mix. maybe that's why, <laughs> maybe CPK sandwiches are actually fucking slappers, except that when they're at the airport, because it's operated wow. by like people that aren't indoctrinated with the CPK credo Bible, whatever. You just got to go and get Buffalo or, um, yeah, Buffalo chicken pizza. We just fucked up by I not know. getting the right stuff because it was like 11, it's like 11, 10. And we're like, yeah, I guess what? We'll no, we lunch. fucked up by not getting Quiznos. And I fucked up right, by not getting Quiznos and getting Carl's Jr. It is. Possibly the worst fast food I have ever had. I've had Hardee's and I never thought it was that bad. But I also, if I was on a road trip, I'm not going to eat that. It was so unremarkable. It came out, look, too much mayo. Honestly, I don't mind a simple burger with like lettuce, tomato, onion, mayo, pickles. Mm-hmm. That's totally fine for me. This was like, taste. It, came, it looked and tasted like you got it at a gas station. And it was like microwaved at a fucking come and go or whatever fucking uh, grab and go pump and bust or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it was just horrendous. And like the soda machines weren't working. How are the fries? Uh, I got onion rings. How are the onion rings? Way too fried, like triple fried. Yeah. So it was just like fried stuff and like a hint of onion. Mm. And yeah. It was not, it was not good. You know, who makes my, in my opinion, the best um, fast food onion ring. Who? Burger King, baby. It's one of the, it's one of the one it's one of the one fucking flowers I'll give to the king. I think Burger King. Great on your I think Burger King love to people love to pile on Burger King. I think that Burger King is a sleeper. I th- I fuck with a Whopper. Yes, they're flame broiled. I have had their jalapeno poppers. Uh, not good for the whittle tummy. You will be shit and fire the next day. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, great onion rings and decent fries. And at least with Burger King, it like a Whopper. I know iconic burger, right? In its own right in a vacuum. But like there is no other fast food that that's the burger. T- yeah. They know that that even just tastes like that. Like it almost. Right. It's almost like an artificial smoke. This, thing. This but like, w- if you want that, that's where you get it. This cause junior was kind of in that genus, mm. but did not live up to fucking Whopper status. Is the uh, menu, and I don't know if you would know this, but my question is, is the Carl's Jr. menu in the DR different from what would just be a Carl's Jr. menu in the States? It seemed pretty fucking... One for like, one. It was just like... No big, local delicacies on that menu? The big Carl, the big Carl with cheese, the chicken tender with ranch, the chicken tender sandwich without ranch. It seemed pretty Damn. de facto so, Carl's Jr. So dog shit. Absolute fucking dog shit. And it was Sad. the only bad thing that happened to me um, on, I just got back from Lawrence uh, from what I truly believe was the top five best trip of my life. That's awesome, dude. I'm so happy to hear that. Tell me more. Okay, I will. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Me and nine other homies, six of us from New York or the Lower Hudson Valley area. Mm -hmm. uh, No, sorry. Eight of us from the New York, Brooklyn, Lower Hudson Valley area. Two homies that live in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, two couples, uh, a bunch of dads, and a few single boys. So uh, honestly, like a great mix, uh, kind of like a cross section. Are all your like college friends? Yeah, all college friends. 
Um, what was, you know, what's Vassar's uh, mascot? <laughs> a beer mug. But but like what is it? What are you like the, the brewers? Mug? The brewers. brewers. Yeah. Okay, so you and, and a bunch of brewers. Yeah, because Matthew Vassar was a brewer. That's cool. Um, and he got rich and made a a college for his daughter because she was too stupid to get. It's actually really funny. You went to college, um, built with beer money. Yeah. And I went to college built with dart money. Wow. Look yeah. at us. Wake Forest, founded by the R. J. Reynolds Corporation. A corporation? Well, or the family, the R. J. Oh. Reynolds family, which is uh, Camel Sigs. How is the smoking policy on campus? Uh, you could. Uh, the reason I got addicted to cigs is because uh, you could buy packs inside. for like five bucks with like on campus. They sold them, yeah. For, unless hilarious. my memory is completely betraying me, you couldn't use your um, student card. Yeah, you couldn't use like your meal plan on it, but it, they were so cheap, dude. I got there a year, I think, after they stopped selling beer, just like in the caf or in like the like the nice cafeteria where you had to like. By the damn, that's kind of sick. Though. I don't think you could get any booze. Out on yeah, campus. no, it's, it's rare. It's rare. It's rare. Yeah, that's um, all right. Though. So me, me and nine friends, you know, some of them I see quite frequently. Some of them I don't see as frequently. We went to and I got to shout this place out. And this is fucking intel for all the fellas listening that are want to plan like a big group trip. I've never done this style of vacation where you go to like a gated community. Effectively, this place is called Casa de Campos or Campo de Casa. I don't know. Um, One of the two. And I think it's kind of well known because like I like was posting shit and people were like, yo, are you at Costa Campos? I'm like, yeah, like I used to go there all the time with my family. It is giant villas like we were in a five bedroom, 10 bed situation hmm. or nine bed situation. Like bunk beds? No, like king beds. Oh, no, nice. king bed. Hell yeah. Um, everyone Share has house. Everyone has a golf cart. There's it's a big golfing mm. like it's a world. It has world renowned golf courses. So I think there's a lot of like boys trips down there for golfing, which remember when we went to the Masters and we were kind of blown away by like the gated community we're in where it's all gigantic houses. It is literally just like how is golf trip bros. But in DR. Yeah, but it was so much more than golfing because like there was like uh, it was a 70,000 acre resort, which is that's a lot of enormous, a lot, lot of land. You know, you could be driving on your golf cart for like 20 minutes and like still stolen. Be- from the indigenous people of the DR. Thank you for the interruption. Don't worry, we did do a land acknowledgement. Um, <laughs> so, what do I want to talk about? Costa Campos, if you're looking for a boys trip, this is like, this is it. So cheap. Yes. Literally like 200 bucks per, 10 people. You get your own bed. No, not your own bedroom. Pool. Staff. Nice. So like, uh, kind of like a point person, a cleaning person, a private chef. Woo! Oh, the private chef's included. Yeah. Fire. And uh, for 200 bucks a night, that's what it ran us. What were they cooking you up? Like mofongo and all that? That's good- Puerto Rican. Fuck. Um, God damn it. I know. Well, you can do like meal plan. Uh, so like, you know, there were definitely, the demographic was like families. I think a lot of like, uh, there were some like Southern University, like sorority, like spring break trips and like okay. frat guys too. I think a lot of high schoolers do go there because I'm pretty sure the drinking age is 18. Were there enough of them to harsh the vibes? No, I mean, it was it was a pretty it wasn't that crowded. It was like a huh. it was like a little bit of everything. There were like families. There were like retirees, snowbirds. Mm-hmm. There were like um, we didn't see any other like dude groups. <laughs> well, you had women with you. You had some we wives. Too. Yeah, we two wives. <laughs> two hands. Two wags. <laughs> but I don't know. We didn't see that many like guys or like groups of like people in their like 30s. But this is a big dude's trip spot for maybe like a younger bachelor. Party I crowd? just I just think that it is untapped. It's potentials untapped mm. again cheap as fuck you get a private chef who's cooking up magnificent meals where you either like buy like uh you either go to the grocery store. like there's everything you want on the compound there's a grocery store liquor store there's like a little town with restaurants um golf courses tennis courts where i fucking play tennis oh, every a lot day. of activities you go dune buggy riding you could go ski shooting you can go like parasailing you know all that shit nice um so there's like stuff to do you don't have to just lay by the pool Although that's kind of what we, I mean, you're only to do. there like three days, right? Or yeah. Whatever it was, so, so Costa Campos, go peep that shit. It is fire for like a large group trip. I don't know if it's good for like, I wouldn't know if it's good for like a three, four, or like a just you and your like SO. Mm. Cause like it, the financials just make sense if you're with a large group of people and you can divide up the fucking cost of the villa and the private chef and all that shit. Yeah. And look, it was just like, ah. A lot of the parents were like, yo, I'm here to like get a break from parenting <laughs> to like charge up, rest up. And what is better than just like, again, spending significant time with your homies beyond just like the two hours you see right. them out at a, a meal 
or at a bar where you're kind of talking more about like the external stuff going on in like pop culture, the zeitgeist, etc. This is your agenda crew. The 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 no, the, uh, somewhat no, but there was no agenda. But like when you're spending enough time with people, you start like what's better than going deep with your boys? I guess nothing, my question nothing. Where you're like, tell me about like like really tell me about your family. Yeah. Like, bro, I don't even know what you do at your job. <laughs> like. You know, what's it like having a fucking kid? What's your kid's name again? Yeah. <laughs> Are you scared of your parents dying? Like that type of shit. Right, right, know? right, right. So like it's four days of that and it's just like <laughs> that's just the best. And like, you know, kind of like stoking the friendship fires. Sure. And yeah, like it's you You know, I've known these people for 20 years. I'll know them for another fucking 50 years. Inshallah. God willing. Um, but it's just like kind of like refreshing. It's like, oh, yeah, like we're not just going through the motions of like chatting and chilling. Like we're actually like remembering why we are such good friends to begin with. Right. Of course. That's the beauty of a trip like this with yeah. people that you haven't seen. You don't see, you know, as frequently as maybe you'd like. to, Or you don't get enough. Life like, gets in the way. You don't get enough time like to go beyond like the superficial. Right. Um, one thing that that speaking of like going deep with the homies, like one thing that uh, I kind of like not dug up, but like we dug into a little bit with my friends was um, my friend, <laughs> my friends who are all like re- relatively normal people. They yeah. have like normie jobs, um, you know, like kind of like teachers, marketing, <laughs> uh, academic, academia, yeah. law, lawyers, uh, entrepreneurs, like self-employed. They were legitimately and they, I only give them like a sampling because like they wanted to see they were fucking appalled at like the comments and discourse <laughs> and like the fact that we do this thing where people can just publicly comment <laughs> on Treat us, us like shit. <laughs> on our performance, on our looks, on our personalities, yeah. on like the net, whatever negative thought they have about us. They were like, holy shit, bro. Like this is not, <laughs> this is not good. Like this no. is not good for you. No, it's not <laughs> like what, like it's not normal for a person to put them to be in a position where anybody can just assail them with like piece of shit. You fucking suck. You're ugly. You're fat, <laughs> bro. And this like is the life we've chosen, bro. And, and at this point, it's kind of like, you know, water off, water off my back. And, you know, it's I've, I, I've mentioned this, like it's something uh, I talk about in therapy and shit and you deal with you have your own coping mechanisms. I know you were like kind of dealing with it a little bit while I was away. Um, <laughs> until Dick Sucking Ron did a DSR reveal and <laughs> blew everyone's minds. And then he started getting hate. And he's like, yo, what the fuck? People commenting on his looks or how he's aged since he made his uh, uh, debutant uh, ball debut at the TF Barbecue, of which apparently we actually have only had one. I was wrong about that. There was not two. Yeah. Um, it just, again, was so good. It felt like uh, Dune Part 1 and Dune Part 2. Uh, once I saw that, I was like, thanks for taking maybe the heat off your boy. But like, God damn, this is just a man. But it was just this, is a, this is a man with a family. I mean, we were talking about like, you know, you're talking about people's <laughs> jobs and like they're airing their grievances with like their jobs, whatever's going on in life yeah. and, and not just the grievances, but the joys as well. And this was one thing where it's like, yeah, this is just what it is. And people are like, bro, like that's crazy. Yeah. You and I was like, this is what Lawrence and I receive every day. <laughs> yeah. Every day. And you, you just got to like, I don't know what your current coping mechanism of mine is just kind of like, yeah. whatever. Um, come with kindness a little bit. It is crazy to just like uh, walk through life like a normal person walks through life and you have a bad interaction and it's hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. This is like a once in a blue moon thing and you like deal with it uh, how you want to deal with it. Whereas like when you're not, I don't want to say fucking public figure, but yeah, you put content out there in one way or another and like pe- like people can just be hateful to you on the daily it is the, crazy the, the women on the trip who are obviously like more empathetic and emotionally intelligent were like are you okay like do you like please do you believe this about yourself and i'm like eh, maybe like deep down a little bit <laughs> yeah well when, and that's the other thing when someone plants the seed to be like fucking inception style you're like wait am i a fat ugly moron don't answer that but you're like fuck Clip it God um damn. yeah they're just like are you okay like is, is this okay? Is this what you want? I'm like, no, it's not what I want, but like, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, two other kind of standout things, kind of like larger Hit me, uh, Jimbo. themes of the trip. Big tobacco trip. Ooh. Um, some cigs. Some cigs were bought at duty free on the way down. Hell yeah. Those were 
crushed pretty quickly. Blasted with the quickness, expeditiously. I don't know what it is about 85 degree humidity, <laughs> but it makes Jimmy want to say gee. What were you drinking primarily down there? President Day. Okay. And oh my God, bro, the rum punches. Woo! Too good. I'd literally be at the bartender at the, at the, at the wet bar, the swim bar. And be yeah. Like, um, can I get a passion fruit anything? Yeah. Or just, can you make me something delicious with passion fruit? And come out this frozen, like passion fruit, rum, a bunch of shit. Mm. Fucking fire. Sounds like uh, something that Champagne Poppy would drink. Oh, yeah. Um, we were speaking of the swim up bar. They, were <laughs> they had a martini on the menu. Disgusting. And Dick Sucking Ron, in the most Dick Sucking Ron move of all time, ordered a martini. And was <laughs> and then they were, we were like, can we smoke at the pool bar? And they were like, yeah, of course. And they bust out two ashtrays because it's a big like cigar. Yeah, yeah. It's cigar and golf cultures go hand in hand, right? Yeah. And we're just fucking smoking like Marlboros. Um, and Dick, seeing Dick sucking around holding a martini that's like half pool water at this point, <laughs> smoking a fucking like wet, wet cig. cig. <laughs> we ran out of cigs, so we had to go to the uh, tobac the tobacconist. Okay. Um, but they only had cigars. They don't the only, sell darts? No. The only tobacco they had was a pouch of American Spirit loose tobacco. Oh, you got to roll your own like a fucking plebe? Yo, I actually liked it. Really? Like, it gives you... Well, like, I hadn't rolled anything in a long time. Sure. Um, my first rolled up cig sucked dick, but I kept at it. And after an hour or so at the rolling <laughs> cigs at the pool bar, passed them out to whoever wanted them. Wet twigs, I dude. kind of fucking nice with it. Really? Yeah. And like, yeah. So like, me and my other boy who were like rolling up, it's like you gotta you gotta dry your hands off, right. crazy, right? You put down some paper towels for like a little station because like there's mad water <laughs> yeah. everywhere. It's a pool bar. I don't know if there's fucking water or martini from Dick Sucking Ron or pineapple juice or uh, passion fruit juice. Um, <laughs> roll them station. up, roll them up. But like you look around and there's like mad just loose tobacco <laughs> leaves just floating in the pool Disgusting. all around you. Yeah, and we're like. Why is no one at, else at the pool bar like hanging out in our area? Why are we like dominating this corner? It's because we're fucking surrounded. We've poisoned the pool with tobacco and martinis. <laughs> it's just brown water yeah. with tobacco <laughs> leaves. Yeah. Uh, I never have liked it, uh, go like the effort. Honestly, what a great way to force yourself to quit smoking. If you had to tell me, if you told me that I had to roll every cig I ever wanted to smoke, I am so lazy that I don't even know if my addiction to nicotine uh, would make me roll a single dart. What's nice is that you can. It's also a, not the same. There's no poison. Yeah. What's nice is you can make a little. Uh, you can make like a mini one or yeah. a fucking fatty. Yeah. I just. Are you doing like like a filter? Did you buy like no, filters? No filters or no. Just straight up smoking papes. Yeah. Papes and leaves. Yeah. I mean, I think when I was like 16, like the hottest, like it's like this, you know, the hot slut in like New York was. She would like wear. What, what do you mean in New? Like in the whole city, she was awarded the title by the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fucking Giuliani hit her with that hot slut metal. <laughs> Miss Hot Slut 2004. <laughs> Just like, hot, that was the thing with like the hot girls is that they'd roll oh, their own cigs and they'd have like the fucking low rise jeans, the thongs up, the little baby tees, big gold hoop earrings, like yeah. uh, the fucking gel down hair. And uh, so it's very much a part of the thing. And then the, I they, still see people rolling their own darts at any fucking party. It's I don't really see it. I don't really see really? it. That, I don't really see it that cur uh, currently because then there's like a fuck it. It was a very indie sleaze. That maybe it's back in that way. Yeah. Indie sleaze like, oh, I'm a fucking film guy. Yeah. I roll my own cigs. The <laughs> other big uh, tobacco thing, tobacco innovation, if you will, is and I feel like you would appreciate this is there were some Zins. We ran out after, again, like two days. Um, but one night. Not me, because I don't like either of these things. Mm -hmm. Dudes were doing uh, zaddies. Mm -hmm. Zin plus Adderall equals zaddy. So you crush up some blue shit. Yep. You crush up the Walter White. Mm -hmm. You uh, The blue magic. I guess you dampen a pouch of Zin. <laughs> you, you fucking yep. roll like a... You a, dust it. <laughs> dust it like it's some fucking panko flakes and you're frying up a katsu. <laughs> and you fucking pop that bad boy in and these guys were flying. I was going to say, speaking of fried, your fucking brain, dude. Because like, yeah. I will say the Zin buzz is ha having been a smoker for so long now, it's just like doesn't hit the same. And not that I want to like smoke or Zin and get like lightheaded and pass out. Uh, but like the the feeling you get from the Zin adding Adderall into that equation and then now extrapolating this process further and then introducing other substances. This to me sounds fucking nuclear. No Toppenheimer. I do think you need approximately 20 Presidentes over the course of eight hours <laughs> yes. before doing a zaddy makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but it, it, or it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, but it's like it's how to turbocharge your zins, right? Uh, fucking turbocharge your fucking brain, dude. Yeah, add some uh, uh, some FDA approved methamphetamines into the mix. If I pop the zaddy, bro, I might fucking start sub stacking. You might dude. fly. You might fly home. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's how like um, dude, that'll turn you into a superhero. Yeah. The Limitless. That's the Bradley Cooper pill. And you know, uh, if a sub stacker became a superhero, you know what their superhero name would be? What? Prestigio. Oh, not sub, sub man. <laughs> no. um, okay. The other <laughs> larger thematic thing I want to talk about before uh, getting off my vacation to honestly highly recommend, like legitimately on the, on the flight home, we were like, look, one, looking up how much the villas cost to go in as a group. Um, very expensive. So that plan was abandoned. But two, looking at future dates because like, for some reason, it is so cheap. Again, when you have 10 people in the mix, a lot of things right. are cheap. But the other thing about this is that a lot of the decision making was taken out of the process where with 10 people, normally it's fucking herding cats. It takes forever to make a decision right. uh, to do anything from like transportation to eating meals yeah. is a fucking burden. It was it. All that was taken out of the equation. And a big part of that was just like the hospitality and the service. Um, most notably having a private chef, which I've never mm. actually, that's the truth. I had a private chef one time when I was at Coachella <coughs> Sagan's house, a fucking SoCal, like sh- white BMX streetwear guys. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking crazy. And that was awesome. But that was part of like, uh, they were just like constantly, there was like a team just like constantly pumping out food. Right. This dude shout out Misael. He's just like, we'd be like, Hey, we would love some like traditional Dominican food tonight. Um, they would handle all the shopping, all the cooking, obviously, mm-hmm. all the service and all the cleaning. And you don't realize how much time a group trip normally has to put into that. Plus the planning, oh, come on, plus dude. being like, okay, we have a pescatarian. Okay. Like people want some yeah. of this, some of that. And to remove like literally seven, five, six hours so much of that shit time, from though? like each day, it's just more chilling yeah, and more like. Hang out time. So gets you closer to the zaddy precipice. While it is, I'm not going to lie, kind of icky and uncomfortable and weird to like, at least for me to go to a place where it's like s- devoted like staff. And there are Dominicans. They're Dominicans. There's a language barrier. Sure. They like. No one speaks Spanish in the crew? Uh, one, one. We had a few. No, no Spanish speakers in the friend group came on the trip, which is kind of unfortunate, but yeah. whatever. Um, you know, or they, they like they work for you. So the dynamic is fucking a little cursed. So I'm we, not going to lie. So we should just say publicly, shout out to the beautiful people of the Dominican Republic who do not eat mufongo. Yes, they eat mangu, um, which is mashed plantains. I think like a bunch of butter, uh, some sort of pork. It's fucking gas. Delicious. Um, so having like a private chef, like the benefit outweighs the personal ickiness. <laughs> You're able to sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. Plus like, come on, you know, we fucking tipped them like, like yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, the other kind of like time I felt a bit gross about like explicitly exploiting, like being incredibly rich and like an incredibly poor country. Yeah. Was play tennis every morning. Beautiful. Two hours, two hours, one hour. I definitely had heat stroke one point. <laughs> Um, my knees are, it was like 89 degrees That's at crazy. like 10 a.m. And you're just fully exposed. I'm imagining. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, definitely got a little pink up here and up here. Nice. Um, some color hiring a ball boy. <laughs> Dude, what are you at the fucking Wimbledon? What are you at the U S open or Wimbledon? Well, in theory that would be fire. Cause it's like, okay, yeah. Somebody can just like chase down the balls for you and like hand them and back. That's to you some again. Nepo baby anyway. Well, and again, it's about saving time, right? Where it's like, all right, instead of like, having a break every yes. time you make three on four hours and having to go collect the balls and then resetting, starting again. You just have a kid that's like running around just and getting the balls. Like a villager? So... Like a child? Like a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Shout out Freelay. Um, <laughs> so in the literature, it's like, this is a way that we oh, get like no. local kids into like the program, the academy. Sure. And you hand the money directly to them. Mm-hmm. So you're not, and it's cash, $5 yeah. US See, for that, an hour. That academy, that's the, um, the Tuttle Academy, right? The what? Tuttle Academy. What's that? From True Detective. Oh. The Tuttle. Oh, stuff. yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, season one or season four? Well, they bring it back in season four because, oh, yeah, fuck it. But, so we were like, okay, let's like try it. And it's like five bucks a head. 
I thought it was going to be like, and they kind of like come up to you. It's 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 kind of like honestly having ten year old ball boys come to you. It's kind of like being at the trick with like ball boy, ball boy, ball oh, boy. Oh, I see, got it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you know what? I got a five dollar bill. Me, yeah, here you go. Let's go. Uh, una hora, por favor. Mm -hmm. One hour, please. Yeah. Um, bro, do not recommend. No, I do not recommend. It made shit worse, or if it made you feel bad, both. Because it's almost like remember when you you might have said this before, like you had an assistant at one point. And people offer to like help us out in that regard every so often. And it's like teaching, forgetting about even how it makes you feel as a person, having to like, and not that you need to teach a ball boy, but like the, <laughs> how to retrieve a ball, but like, not a dog. But, but the process of like learning how to interact, it's like, that's too much effort. I'll just do it. I'll just do it myself. This kid was very good at being a ball boy. Oh. Uh, he fetched and tossed like a champ, like his father and his father before him. Um, being Dominican, perhaps he had a very awesome. He, like he's definitely a shortstop. Oh, you know I mean? like, he was whipping him. He had a he had a fucking cannon. He had a whip. Whew. No, no, no. But it, it's not about speed. It's about accuracy. And honestly, it's about uh, bouncing it to me perfectly. There was one time. <sighs> okay. The ickiness did not outweigh the convenience sure. like it did with the personal chef. There was a moment where I was like, "Fucking kill me!" Where like he <laughs> like there was a ball and like I started going for it and he started going for it and he like paused. And I did one of these. I just, I just went, Ooh. and I was like, "What the fuck? What's wrong?" But I thought I was, I was like, "Oh, you go ahead." But I was just like, uh, "Who did I become?" Just so fucking nonchalant yeah, and bro. fucking that's disgusting. Felt like Robert Downey Jr. Um, <laughs> and then, and then also, he would get the ball every single time. So it's like if I dump the ball into the net, but I have a ball in my pocket, I could just start the point right there, exactly. But then had to wait for him to like run, retrieve. But don't you want that cleared off the court? Uh, like if it was a real not if it's fucking not match, if, yeah, if it's a real match. But right. also, if here's the other thing: if you're rallying or just playing rallying for points versus serving, right? So it was a whole thing. I felt fucking weird. Never exploiting again. that. Like, uh, yeah, that was a, a a bridge too far in terms of like paying for like very impoverished labor. Although I benefit from that every single fucking day. Five <laughs> bucks an hour? Which I think Yikes. is a good amount of money for a 10-year-old? Maybe. In, in DR? Maybe. I don't know. Probably. It just, it just sounds extremely impossibly criminally low. But it's like... And there's right. definitely no minimum wage in the DR. So. Okay. The average hourly wage in the Dominican Republic is $35. So... <laughs> I thought, you were gonna say I thought we were going to say 35 cents. So like, no. OK, but God damn that stuff. Now, what else would that 10 year old be doing with his time? Maybe practicing on the diamond so he could fucking get into the but, show. But he's, also, but he's also part of the he's like in the academy for kids. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, so he's a good tennis player. Like he's probably he's probably oh. watching us being like, yo, these guys fucking suck. There's one time. Did you get did he get the hit at all? Did you like be like, yo, let's fucking see what you're made of? No, I didn't have a racket. There's one point where I Give fucking a racket. There's one point I had to borrow a racket. There's one point where uh, and this is the last thing I'll talk about this, but there was one point where it was this fucking crazy point. I'm running all over the place. I'm like I'm like smoking it down the line, fucking saving it, going cross court, drop shot. Uh, I got lobbed. I had to run back and fucking save it. Then I had to run and get a dro uh, drop shot again. Little flick of the wrist, just crazy angle over the net, mm. hits the line. He's right there at the corner of the net. And I look up thinking that I was going to get a, like one of these and like a fist bump. He's yeah. just like, he's just like, like he's I see not impressed. I see that shit every day. He's so unimpressed. And shame on me. And then maybe after that, I was like, yo, fuck this. <laughs> Yo, give me that this, ball. This fucking hater, dude. Yo, yo, give me that about ball. About to garnish kid. your wages, you fucking hater. Yeah, so I felt really... I did not feel good doing that. Yeah, that's... Uh, um, I feel for you. That's shitty, dude. Not yeah. worth it at all. But, like, at least I got the experience. Now you know. Because now I know. No, if you're doing it here in the States at, like, a club, it's, like, definitely different. It's like getting a caddy. Yeah. Yeah. Though I wonder, yo, so is it, like, the same kind of... Is it, like, 10-year-old boys lugging clubs? Or it's carts, guys. Well, that's, like... Well, I guess retrieving, running to retrieve balls in the 89 degree heat and throwing them perfectly is also manual labor. I don't know, bro. Not Let's great. stop talking about this. Yeah, <laughs> not, not a great look for Jimbo. Yeah. I'll say. Um, let me ask you this, though. Yeah. Here in New York, I'm noticing a new phenomenon. <laughs> okay. That of the jazz bro. What, what do you mean? So. What is that? Yeah. Who, what is it? Way in the comments. I want to know if this is like a, a accurate kind of like trend phenomenon cultural thing where i feel like we had the the craft brewski guys yeah obviously. right then we had the natural wine bros 
Then we had the martinis at Classic New York Institutions. And these are all like guys that are wearing fucking Siegelman stable hats, fucking ALD Yankee fitteds, 550s, fucking, uh, you know, like the dangly earring motherfuckers. Okay. I'm pretty sure that jazz bars are their new thing where what it's like. What's your research based on? TikToks? A single TikTok. <laughs> um, and nice. But, uh, and also just kind of like being a, a cultural sponge by osmosis. Right. And okay. So uh, I guess to answer this question and we can move, we can uh, move through this. Um, are these guys like fans of jazz or no. is this? No. No, no. Okay. So they're, they're taking dates to jazz clubs. I think it's very Instagrammable. I think it's fake cerebralness where you're like, sure. Oh, I'm in a jazz club. Yeah. Well, right. 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 Um, I mean, same motherfuckers that go to Bebelman is like, yo, I'm a Bebelman. Okay. Where are these jazz? Like in the Westville? Westville, fucking Midtown, Blue Note, Bluebird, not Blue Note. Um, fucking, you know, so there's a bunch are, of Midtown. So these like jazz cappers. They don't like actually like yeah, Sarah Sanders. Fucking, or no, whoever. they're not fucking out here listening to Charlie Parker, but it's just like, uh, <laughs> I think it's dudes that are like. Bird. Yeah, I think it's dudes that are like, oh, yeah, I'm so fucking cultured jazz clubs. I could see it being like a total fucking pussy getting maneuver on a first date where it's like you're yeah. absolutely because that's like with the natural wine thing, like natural wine is tasty and good and it's nice and I right. like it. Right. It's like if you are the kind of guy that's like, it's going to make me be perceived in a certain way to a member of the fair sex. I think also to the see where that goes, to the fair sex and to the other boys. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh. If jazz as like, first of all, the only true American art form, <laughs> if jazz, it's about the notes you don't play, right? If jazz becomes, you know why? Because they're all on heroin. So they nod out mm. and miss their notes. Hell yeah. Because they're on too many zaddies. Yeah. No, Actually, they weren't on enough zaddies. go crazy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't clip that. Like okay, that was yeah. jerking off a fucking <laughs> a trombone, yeah, rusty dude, trombone, uh, which is a <laughs> trombones don't have balls. Um, <laughs> it was more of the trumpet. Was oh, muff, the, the, the muffler? The muffler. Yeah, these guys listen to the muffler trying to get some. Yeah, muff. It's like you know, playing a fucking. Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's I'm a trying bit to get from Ricky Stanicki. I'm trying to play. Oh, you watch that? Yeah. Oh God, bro, you know where to draw the line. Oh, um, one more. Th okay, but I, I think it's a whole like like piece of like a subculture, yeah. its own culture that I think is untapped. But we're gonna start in terms of like the corn balls. Cornball make it their personality. Yeah, I wonder where we're gonna start seeing like be people being like, "Yo, bro, like my style inspo is fucking well, Miles Davis, obviously, sure. but uh, fucking like Artie what Shaw, era? Artie Shaw, Big Ben era. You're gonna start seeing a lot of these motherfuckers on mood boards. Chet Baker, you're gonna see a lot of Chet. Uh, Chet was always a Miles and Chet are, are zoo board staples. You're gonna see a lot of Chet done by Chats. Nah, not really. You're gonna see all the mood boards. You're going to see a lot of mood words tap into this. You're going to see guys claim to be fucking jazz heads. Sorry, it was more like a, when I say like Tumblr blog era, not like Zood board. Questions. I'm talking Zood yeah, boards. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of guys are just going to claim jazz in order to jizz. There <laughs> it is. Uh, nice. I think that this is the next like exploited subculture for contemporary aesthetics and pussy getting optics. Jenna and I would go to one place in the West Village that I just remember um, it was a fun, it is a fun date night and I w it wasn't like anything, it wasn't performative. I mean, this was like even like before fucking people were doing shit for social media because this is how long ago it was but uh, I just remember this one place and I can't remember the establishment. It just smelled so bad. Like what? Just, just disgusting B.O. because all these people like sweating in a West Village basement hammered with these guys on stage just well, going crazy what was the crowd it was more like regulars and real new yorkers and i think that well, that's i think you might have gotten like uh because there are like upper west side fucking freaks that are like still into jazz right yeah i guess they're going they would be going downtown in this in this because there's got to be jazz clubs all over the city right there's a bunch of midtown a bunch yeah. of harlem but like uh yeah i think like i mean that's the whole thing with jazz that people go from like hoity-toity society right and go downtown where it gets a little blue mm -hmm. um so I feel, but I think the, uh, that's where I buy my heroin, you know? Yeah. But I think that, uh, the, like people that listen, I don't know, people that listen to no, corny. and people that have BO, I'm sure there's a big overlap. Yeah. Well, yeah. Back then. Yeah. 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 I now just, it's guys that wear a fucking ASOP and shit. Well, it's claimed to look right. Honestly, the club probably smells and smells like Santal 33. Yeah. Now, dude. Like a hundred percent. No, we always had fun on our jazz date nights. And then, uh, uh, fat cat, formerly fat cat, now cellar dog, which has shuffleboard and ping pong and is like, uh, definitely like a fun hang. If you're like, I love playing shuffleboard at the bar. Um, they have a lot of tables there. Um, they, their situation is, um, from their, 
the the pedigree of the location, which I guess maybe at one point was like a proper jazz club when this shit was was actually cracking off as the only true American. F- oh, you're wrong, dude. Hip hop. You forgot about hip hop, bro. Right. You forgot about real motherfucking hip hop. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, they'll. So you're down there playing ping pong or show. Fat Cat was. I used to go to Fat Cat. It's f- in high school. Yeah, and it, that's a, that's a it, crowd. They let you smoke weed down there, and oh, it was sick. it was just it was just uh, billiards. Every time that I've gone, I usually do get like a yo it up, Larry, like big fan of the products. It's all fucking college kids, like NYU motherfuckers. When I would go there, we were the only. It was like all like derelicts because it's just it was right. just like cheap, and you could no, just like spend anymore. whatever. They, and they rebranded post COVID. Yeah, you could spend like hours down there just shooting pool, and we go down there shoot pool, and just they would let you smoke or. They wouldn't say anything if you were smoking weed. The uh, but what I really like is that um they do a bunch of like jazz band like either it's like sessions or like rehearsal. Um, so it's not like you're like there to play games and drink and have fun, and then you have this like really um beautiful, relaxing or kind of like intense and fire just music that's kind of happening. You can sit down like they literally have their like old church pews. Like you can sit down and watch the rehearsal, but like uh, that to me is. Like a nice way of like, like the bros, maybe they, if they're not already familiar, maybe that's like the move. Yeah. Maybe do the date there yeah. and smoke some poor bitch and ping pong or shuffleboard. Yeah. Hit it. <laughs> hit it, cats. <laughs> or just fucking watch Whiplash. <laughs> Dude, I love Whiplash. I know you love Whiplash because you're a film bro. I'm um, sorry. That, not, not to belittle your interest. No, it's fine. I want to ask you this. We're still going. We're still going. People, we're, we're giving people oh, what dude, they want. Oh, dude, usually when it's at an hour, we just fucking tap out. Yeah, we're still going. What's the longest you think we could pot? Boys only. Forever. I think four hours. Oh, I mean, we've. Oh, without a guest? Just boys only, yeah. I think the longest ever. Oh, by the way, fucking, I was gonna say longest ever. Ezra, shout out Ezra wearing the fucking DMA still. Oh, yeah. Fucking great fucking look, dude. Um, I wish you could comment so on their uh, Instagram. I know. I didn't know because I was. In Can't. The- I was, Can't do it. I was in the DR. I didn't know where that came from. I just saw the picture came through. It's I was like, from, where uh, is it? I find, and then I went to a music video. Well, then I went to their IG and I was like, oh, this is where it is. Yeah. Got it. So I think between him on uh, the lo- how he launched TF and we, we were splitting up Epson into two between that and, and then Caramonica, I think those are the only ones that ever kissed for. I think you and I could probably do if we were like, oh, it's a marathon pod for charity. Like we could just fucking talk. Should forever. we go? To, should we like like jazz? Should we just we don't even know when we're going to stop. Podcasts are kind of like jazz. We're yeah, playing off one another. It's, honestly, it's one of the last true American art forms. You got your solo time. I got my solo time. We're fucking talking over each other. So there's like <laughs> some like improv, some improv, some riffing. Some shit's hitting. Some shit's not. Honestly, yeah. you, it's riffing, bro. Yeah, it's, it's riffing. It's the interruptions you don't make. <laughs> yeah, you don't know about those, dude. It's the bad jokes you don't make. Not you, me, because um, I don't get to make them because you're interrupting me. Uh, I want to ask you this. <laughs> Yo, this is. Do you want to? Should I say a mean thing that people are saying? Yeah. People are saying that you use that as a crutch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like on like a guest, but you'd be like, so conversation is happening, some riffing. It's great. And I'm not even, I kind of like it because it's like, it's good for me who's a moron, a fat, ugly, stupid moron. I almost said a bad word. It's a nice reset because you go, let me ask you this. Yeah. It's nice. I, I like it. And people are like, oh, and I'm like, shut the fuck. So two people said that and you're going to let it affect your brain for the rest of the day. I'm just standing up for my boy after then also surfacing this complaint. (laughs) Yeah. I want to ask you this. Maybe it's it's called a fucking catchphrase, okay? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the catchphrase of an interviewer. Let me ask you this next question. The next merch is going to be, let me ask you this. Um, we've been wanting to talk about this for a minute. So the question I pose to the, that's my new catchphrase. <laughs> the question I want to pose to you. <laughs> have you good. ever seen a true grail in the wild? Mm-hmm. And have you ever been so moved? Your pickle's been so tickled. Your John Spidey sense has just fucking gone through the roof that you've actually considered like making an offer on the spot. Apropos, hmm. And you don't know this person. Damn, James, this is a crazy good question because this just happened to me roughly Whoa. three weeks ago. And it's so good that we could finally get to it. I was going to meet Jenna in Fort Greene um, at a bar uh, where she was getting brunch and reading and having some drinks as she's wont to do. Um, and as I walk into the restaurant, I'm actually wearing these exact pants and I hold the door open for a very swaggy couple. And the guy goes, Hey man, I love those pants. And I said, Hey man, thank you. And you already know I had clocked him coming 
that's why I'm even holding the door. Right. I see him walking up. You hadn't said hello to your wife or anything because you're waiting to talk to this John's enthusiast. Yeah. This dude. Well, actually, it's interesting because he was wearing, and I put this on Instagram, um, what I would consider a true grail. These Prada hiking boots from either 2018 or 2019. People have seen the fucking fake Blundstone versions. I've got them. A bunch of people have got them. But the hiking boots are very rare. The only person I know who has them is Hugo Mendoza. Mm. And then this guy. Now, here's what kind of bummed me out. So oh, I immediately said to him, so my, after he compliments the pants, I go, thank you. Don't think I don't see the Prada hikers. <laughs> and I actually was expecting a bigger, like, one. Wow, man. One heart recognizing their counterpoint in another. Let's go double date at a jazz show. Um, So... Grails on the feet. And was, wait, sorry, so you were expecting. So what'd you get? I just got a. Uh, thanks. Yeah, don't be weird. But here's bro. what. Here's don't, what, don't be fucking weird. So bro. then, when I didn't get the fucking love, I was like, all right, well, fuck this guy. But so he has the. Because love is transactional for you. We do know that. That's a fact. It's a two way street. Right. I prefer that. You give love to get love because it is. You got to show one, love one to for get one. love. It's one for one. It's a Beatles lyric. You could just show <laughs> love. You could just show love. I, and I do. And I do. You could just show love. Nah, but you show love and you were disappointed with the getting love. All right, let me fit check this guy. And I pray to God he never hears this. Okay. Grails on the feet. Yeah. Great. Good, seemingly like washed vintage denim. So from the waist down, we're cooking with fucking gas. Then it's some like bad sweater, bad trench coat, and then to top it all off, there's a Prada nylon fucking stupid the Bucky. Um, no, um, oh, the Kendall Roy ball, ball cap uh. with the triangle logo. And then the worst part, because I'm holding the door and they're walking in front of me, is that the Velcro strap in the back was just undone and just like hanging in he the wind. Huge, he had a huge. Dome? No. What? And I'm like, oh, this is a little sloppy. Oh. So as they sit down. Uh, so he's I, a bottom. <laughs> he's a bottom so I go and sit down next to Jenna at the bar and I'm like she keeps seeing me because and they're sitting like ca kind of catty corner I keep like just <laughs> looking at the, I keep admiring and it's uh the shoe comes in a few colorways but the two best are beef and brock and then even the best what he had which is brown with this pop of yellow similar don't you have these no I have the um the Chelsea boot version with a pop of orange mm. but these are just a hiking boot it is a colorway that I liked so much the brown and the yellow pop that I brought it to the table when we collabed with DMA for a second time in the most recent yeah, we, were like, we were like okay time to think about what we're going to do with metal and you're like, hey, hey should we do these should we do these DMA hikers with brown and yellow yeah it's like alright Lawrence we're going to get there we're going to get there but what should we do with second what should we do with uh you know Captain Second right, right. Uh, uh, hikers with the yellow I really thought they would also be like an instant bestseller but I don't think anyone gave a shit but anyway I keep peering around and Jenna's like what are you doing people like the hiker seekers they really and also the shits that I like, which was we, we, strange to me. And I, I thought those were going to suck. And we and we ran that uh, brown and yellow colorway and then a whole you know wide range of styles or I guess three styles. Anyway, I keep peeping the fucking shoes around the corner of the bar. How long did it take before you uh, sniped a, fic, a pick of the stranger? 30 seconds, because I was like, these are hitting IG immediately. Uh, and then I was thinking, I was like, all right, let's say hypothetically, fellas, right? if you're posting a, a pick of another man, of a stranger's shoes. Yeah, they're that. But it's Sucks. a grill. All right. It's a grail. Right. Is is having a grail gay? Yeah. Um, so I'm like, if if there was a world where these weren't like on grail and people weren't taxing and like because I could get them, I just like I'm see going I mean, I you look at sold listings and you see people scooping them for like even under four hundred dollars. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna let myself get got and be a fucking jerk off and pay like anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand dollars but i was like if this dude had the same size shoe as me and if these were these are bad this is a bad version yeah. um but those are like murdered out and terrible but i was like if they were my size like it's like a fake tim with like the fat and yeah, yeah, yeah and again there's a beef and broccoli colorway that is like the fakest of the fake tims uh, i think asap nast has these as well you know it's a cool guy fucking shoe um anyway i was like you can't buy someone's shoes off their feet because then what do they wear yeah, and you don't know their size, too. Like, but I was saying, if we were the same size, like, what would it take for me to, like, get these off this guy's feet? There might not even be any available right would, now. What would you offer? $500? Wow. Yeah, that's, that's insane. Uh, that's not that crazy. No, it's probably... There's worn shoes, though? Worn shoes? I'm not mad at that. And again, they, they're not that old. It's not like a 90s thing where, like, you know, they're from, again, just a couple of years ago. 
Yeah, I guess you could like resole that or get like new anyway. insoles. Um, that was the end of my interaction with him. I took my flick, I put it on IG, and it just got me. Uh, and then immediately, like Gallagher, who also loves these, hit me up. He's like, "You saw him?" Because again, they're very. You don't. I see the Chelseas every so often. I never see these hmm. again. Hugo and and right. then Nast on IG, and then this fucking guy, your your brown and yellow whale, who like might just be a prod of VIP shop. It and, sounds like yeah, it. and then just had him um, yeah. when they when his fucking you know like Dave Porter had the guy hit him up from the right. store, being like. Yo, you want these the shirts, whatever. Che Guevara um, fit. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. Uh, the flip side. Well, yes, the flip side where I was once offered to sell something to someone, mm. but it wasn't a grail. It was a John. I was again in high school. Um, I, <laughs> okay, this is kind of embarrassing. I missed my train stop because I was so engrossed in conversation with this man who had immigrated to New York from, I think, Senegal, maybe Somalia. Okay. Where I missed my... Do you have a parrot on his shoulder and an eye patch? No, I missed okay. my... He was not a pirate. Um, <laughs> I missed my... I missed 14th Street and I had to get off at... Wait, were you on the R train? I was on the R. Really? The W did not exist. R. Nice. He's, again, not a pirate. <laughs> um, I can't help myself. Uh, associate, <laughs> think that all Somalis are pirates? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. so bad. Yeah. I think it was Senegalese because I think I knew uh, I know how to say not. I don't know. Did the did the conductor uh, walk out and say I'm the conductor now? No. Um, <laughs> definitely I'm, Senegalese. I'm but yeah, I was. I love. We were just chat. I don't know how we started chatting, right. but I felt like fucking Kareem on Keep the Meter Running, where it's like, <laughs> oh, where are you from? Da da da. Um, which or honestly, sub or subway takes. Honestly, uh, was a thing that I used to do sometimes. Usually, I like, kind of twisted, just like. Ask the taxi driver what the story is. Yeah. No cameras, not a fucking phone in sight. <laughs> not for the content. So anyway, so I got off at Prince Street and I'm going up the stairs and I'm like, fuck it, I'll just walk home. Um, and or I got I, at Prince Street to uh, cross the street to mm -hmm. get to Uptown. Yeah. Maybe that was it because that's a far walk. And um, this guy's coming down and it's like 12 o'clock on like a Friday, Saturday. It's kind of raining out. So then it's kind of dead. This man, a handsome cowboy who's shirtless. <laughs> Great chest of uh, blonde hair. Um, <laughs> okay. I know he's a cowboy because he's wearing a fucking cowboy hat. And this is this must have been 2002. Okay. -ish. He goes, hey, man, can I buy that shirt off you? And I'm just wearing like a fucking white T-shirt. This is literally the naked cowboy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Times Square. He's like, oh, man, can I, I really need a shirt. They're not letting me back my hotel without a shirt on. Man. I'm like, <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you like. He's like, I'll give you this Metro card that has like $50 on it for that white team. I'm like, no. No like, shirt, I, no shoes, no room service. I have a good joke. I have a student Metro card. Like, I don't need that shit. Um, he's like, come on, man. Like, I'll get, let's get some cash. I can get some cash and, and uh, I can buy that T-shirt off you. I'm like, nah, but like, how much? Give me that cowboy hat. <laughs> and he goes, son, <laughs> I can't do that. This here's a Stetson. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was fire. I'm going to help you find a t-shirt. What, so, what was the shirt that you were wearing? You just remember? like a white t-shirt, just like a regular white t-shirt. But if you had given it to him, you would have then been shirtless. Yes, but I could have gone home or I was going home, right? right. He had to get into his hotel. And, I, and it, so I had a genius plan. I texted my friend who lived nearby, maybe beep them. I don't know if uh, texting, not chirp a text, them, chirp te them. texting existed. <laughs> Yo, Ayla, what up? <laughs> um, and so we're walking to her house and she's agreed. She's going to like throw like a, a t-shirt out the window. And I'm like, so like, how did you lose your shirt, bro? He's like, man, I got into a little scrap. <laughs> I was like, oh, what was the fight? That's crazy. What was the fight over? He goes, man, what's every fight over? A girl. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck, bro. Sorry. Um, but we got the T-shirt. He was able to get into his hotel. He gave me his Metro card that had like 20 bucks on it. Um, and yeah, that's the only time someone's offered to buy something off my back. But, not, but not Grail. Well, Grail related in that he needed it to get shelter. Yeah. So it's and, even more important than a grill on a and, rainy night in the big city. I know. And maybe some vagina. And I remember he was wearing like <laughs> cowboy boots. Like he was a fucking hot cowboy. Yeah. Uh, and I remember that. Yeah. And it was just like, man, this here is a Stetson. Um, <laughs> no can do, boy. Yeah. This right here. These 10. What is it? 12 gallon? What is it? 10 gallon. These 10 want, gallons are all pure Stetsons. I didn't even want to fuck. I, I was like. I don't know why I was like, give me the hat. Like, I, I don't just want to love hat. you riding the train back home shirtless in then a Stetson. And well, because <laughs> I think then I would have to walk home because I'm not going to take the train shirtless Right. because um, there's men out here that are trying to do seven year old boys. But I'd be wearing the Stetson, which would keep the rain off me. That's true. It really would. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's like an umbrella for your head. It's like the little, basically, it's like a cooler version of the umbrella that you can find. Like, he like showed it to me. He's like, this here's a Stetson. You see like the band on the inside? Mm. That makes it a Stetson. I'm like, oh, okay. Are Stetsons like, even like that expensive? I think Stetsons are like the Cadillac of cowboy hats. No, I, I know like, that, but like, I don't think they're like a th- thousand dollars. Well, or maybe they have. I don't know if this guy was rich. I mean, he fucking didn't have a shirt. Um, and also, it's probably like it's probably a crazy sentimental value. You 100%. know. Uh, so anyway, wow. that's the only time that um, fucking guys tried to buy shit, some shit off me. Off I'm happy back. that three weeks later we can finally cross that off the run a show and give you guys the kind of pure, uncut beautiful content that you not just fucking pay for but that you fucking deserve yeah two hours um you know uh guest episode this week is with me khalifa a long one two hours as well Banger. i believe and uh yeah and um, a fun after is we get into some crazy do we shit. i don't because I, I was stressed just trying to make the event on time which yeah. we did well no we we're 30 minutes late yeah but we were also showing up so early yeah. for sound check that it didn't matter but um yeah it's been another episode of the only of the boys only only podcast. That wow, matters. that's a new. I know. Maybe I'll put it on a t-shirt. Chef, take us out. Peace.